Welcome back to Dumb Scum and Villainy, a Dumb Dumbs and Dice podcast where professional voiceover artists and improvisers explore the underworld of this Star Wars Edge of the Empire role-playing game. I'm your host, Bloto the Toydarian. This series features our game master Tom McGee, Ryan Laplante as Abraxas Brash Core, Tyler Hewitt as Vic Denbar, Guy Bradford as Engage 311, and Ada McNamara as the forgetful psychopath Waka Waka Fanzi. Battle lines have been drawn as the gang begin to turn against each other. Brash embraced his fate as a Sith Lord. Vic chafed against his assignment as Brash's apprentice. Serpento slaughtered Waka Fonzie in a mind palace and rose as a new rival personality. And Engage secretly decided to betray Serpentos to avenge Waka Waka Fonzie. There, you're caught up. So get out of my shop or spend money. No credits, only money. So a slightly longer time ago, in the same galaxy vicinity we've been in the whole time, um, Engage, you had a problem. And that problem was that uh, the man who answered your ad was like five degrees more psychotic than you'd hoped for. Uh, you'd hoped that you would get someone idealistic or, you know, engaged um so that your name would fit uh <laughs> oh. but uh instead you got serpentos ultra magnus um now the good news is that uh all of your your waka initiative tech worked spectacularly well he gained the additional strength he gained the agility um he gained uh the rapid healing factor that's never been referenced on the show before um <laughs> But the part of the problem was that he was too good. You succeeded too hard. And your bosses at the Waka Initiative were pissed. So we begin our story today uh, in the past, in that lab, um, when uh, you were discussing uh, with the Board of Shadowy Figures, who are a bunch of people who have realized that Star Wars hologram technology is so bad that if you just look down you're basically invisible. So um, four figures uh, shrouded in bluish scanline darkness, all looking at the ground, speaking loudly and articulately so you can hear them. Um, but uh, the, uh, the leader, uh, the founder of the Waka Initiative, is uh, giving you the uh, nth gauge degree uh, about this. Um, so... Uh, he begins by saying, um, Engage 311, we have heard very upsetting rumors that your latest Waka Initiative project has not gone according to plan. Is it true you have lost control of him? No, not control, not fully. A little bit of control. Yeah, he's pretty far gone. Okay, that is less than ideal for us. So, listen, uh, I know you care a lot about your subjects. It is one of the, the flaws in your particular model, but, you know, this is awkward for me, as I'm sure it is for you, but, you know, we'll have to kill you if you don't, you know, sort the Waka problem. Oh. Serpentos Ultra Magnus must die. Hey, okay, hold on, hold on, back up, fella. And he, like, steps three steps back from the hollow yeah. projector and just gets a little <laughs> bit darker and smaller. Look, I think we need to give this kid another chance. Look, I really think he's at a C right now. But, you know, give him a little nudge of encouragement. You know, you know get him into some Kumon math. I think uh, <laughs> he could become a very efficient, proficient killer. You know, we just got to teach him the A, B, Ks. The K is for kill. I see. So you mean to tell us that his distance to Vry learning has not turned out as we'd hoped? Sadly, no. He seems to be more of a Sylvan case than anything else uh, I've ever encountered in my lifetime. Yeah. And then you hear one of the other voices be like, Utana Tika! It's like, yes, yes, you were right. Sylvan was the way to go. We, Okay, well, <laughs> contracts were signed, all right? Sometimes you just have to do it. But I must say, 311... Your siblings have not encountered such problems. Their units are performing spectacularly. You have one more chance. Apply the Kumon math. 
teach the sylvan ways. However, if your unit does not fall in line, you know what you must do. Oh, um, <clears throat> sorry, I, I, I make that threat, and we, we both know the, the protocol. Um, uh, I wasn't sure if you had one, so we mailed you a lightsaber. It's, uh, it should be arriving in six to eight days. Oh, okay. Well, thank God I have my pneumatic tube system set up, so it will fall directly in front of me when that happens. <laughs> we designed you that way for a reason, 311. Make sure you do not fail us. You wouldn't want to end up like 308. Uh, and then he clicks off, and the other ones are all, like, doing that stupid thing we do on Zoom where they're all trying to find the, like, stop hologram button, but they're all, like, bad at it. So one guy just, like, sits yeah. back, and he's like, ah, oh, jeez, that was really... St oh, shit, shit, shit! Uh, and then he presses the button until he, he blinks out. Um... So, Engage, you're left alone in in your your lab, um, and uh, what's uh, what do you think your lab looks like back in the day? Uh, it's very cluttered. Okay. Uh, it's basically kind of like a bunker that a uh, uh, um, <clears throat> a nutcase would have in <laughs> you know in their basement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They should have put time into making it look nice because you, they might live there for a while if things go south. But uh, no, it's just wrenches, <laughs> like all <laughs> there's wrenches and, and socket wrenches and all the various wrenches just going around the uh, the walls there. Um, there's a there's a uh, an X Files uh, looking for the truth. I believe. <laughs> I want to believe. Yep, yep. Uh, that's the one. That 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 piece of shit's hanging up there too. <laughs> And uh, look there, into the truth. <laughs> yeah, there's also like, um, there's also this um, hang in there uh, poster next to the I want to believe. Yep. But it's of a robot cat eating a real cat. All right. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Um, and I'll say uh, the last and perhaps most important uh, one is an old, old poster um, that is um, kind of uh, worn with age. Um, and, uh, it is of a, uh, a cloaked figure in kind of that classic brown Jedi robe. Um, and it's got the stupid Star Wars font that's like, all of it looks kind of like the British pound sign or like the yen sign upside down. Um, and, uh, holding a, a green lightsaber. Um, and, uh, it just says... Uh, like in big letters in Star Wars font, like, may the force be with you. And down beneath it says, Ey! and you can see uh, the cloaked figure giving a double thumbs up with a popped <laughs> collar. Um, it would be days until you realized that you only had one choice left and uh, dispatched a, another one of the agents of your program to, to hunt down Serpentos Ultra Magnus, um, of the six people you sent, uh, only one succeeded. You never heard from the others again, so you had to assume that they were all killed in action. But the one managed to pull it off. The board of shadowy figures was appeased for the time being, um, but you were dissatisfied because what you failed to tell them and what really would have been a, a useful little feather in their cap was exactly what you were trying to accomplish back then, with that particular model. You thought maybe he could be something more. Maybe. Now, as you stare at the imposingly ridiculous frame of Serpentos Ultra Magnus, a man of barrel chest, great strength, great abs, and tiny spindly sweeping arms and legs, tottering around maniacally, you think of how close you actually came to perfection and how deeply, deeply hurt you are that he killed your little baby boy, Waka. Uh, so, Serpentos. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> um, <clears throat> putty in my hand says what? What? Oh. Uh, <laughs> there's still a chance. All right. Hey, hey um, look. I, uh... I just wanted to apologize for the way that I acted inside of my mind when you were there. I, uh, you know, when 
Walker was in control of this body. He did a lot of terrible things. And, and part of that was manipulating me to say bad things. And me lashing out at you was wrong. And I, I just wanted to apologize for that. Oh, well, this is a development. Yes. Uh, oh, well. Hey, you know what? There's no uh, steal off my hide, as I say. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. I mean, I just want you to know that in any kind of violent thing that you have seen Walker do was him. It wasn't me. I'm the rational one. I'm here to be your friend. What? Uh, or your son. You... Oh. Dad. Oh, I got a little robot chub. <laughs> oh. And uh, engage as uh, you watch Serpento stumble out of the room to go and uh, try and uh, a get why some like stronger legs and be why perhaps is he stump oh the the legs basically tiny stumble. tiny sweep sweep legs. <laughs> um, you watch him go and you you shake your robotic head because truly as a manipulator he has failed to understand that the thing you loved most about Waka was the violent acts. And so you resolve to team up with your occasional enemy, Brash, to try and bring vengeance to your house. It has now been several days. Um, you've been in hyperspace, so like a cool blue space tunnel. Um, and um, Serpentos, you've realized that uh, the loyalty of the crew, despite how ramshackle everything is, runs deeper than at first you'd, you'd imagined. When you awoke to this new world uh, for the first time, uh, you saw just a, a ship full of rubes. Uh, and for the first time, you actually had the physical power and capabilities to perhaps um, work your will upon them. However, with the loss of your limbs and some of your armaments, um, you are now like the the pirate from Family Guy, just sort of tottering around the ship. <laughs> right, um, right. And you've decided that um, for now, uh, you're not in a tremendously good position uh, to mutiny and seize control of the ship. So you're biding your time. There will come a time to strike, uh, but that time has not yet presented itself. Uh, here's my question to you. What do you think over the span of the few days that we're in hyperspace you'd be doing to improve your robot body? Um, well, I, I, I want to talk to um, uh, Shatterstar and... Uh get her to make me some some robocop legs and i i want two robot arms and i want each arm to be able to transform into its own separate fork gun but i want this to be kind of like on the down low i see um okay so here's what i'll offer you it's a bit of a devil's bargain which i keep stealing from one <laughs> I, game and applying to others i get um, that a lot <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I know r.i.p richard uh so If she dismantles the righteous indignation completely, hmm. she can build you the robot legs and one fork gun arm. You are still short a fork gun. However, you do recall there being one slung over Tutu Cups' shoulder when you met him for the first time. So there's another one soon, but for now, you can get one full, like, uh, I, I'm thinking you're, you're talking like a like a Samus Aran like Mega Man arm cannon type thing. Or are you talking like robot hand transforms into fork gun fire transforms back into hand kind of deal? Yeah, like that. Like it's it's concealed. So like it okay. would look like I have two robot arms, but the one arm can kind of like like. Okay, I'll say for now you've got a shitty shitty Mega Man arm. You'll need to cannibalize oh. a proper robot to get the other arm. Um, so aboard the ship. Uh, none of the robots are good for this because they're all kind of spindly. Um, so you'll need to find uh, when you arrive at um, uh, uh, Ryxos, uh, which is Tutu Cups's planet. Um, you'll uh, the moon rather uh, that, that he has his compound on. Uh, you'll have to keep your eye open for droids. Now there will be likely many droids. It'll be up to you to determine what kind of droid arm you want. Will it be mm. a C three PO arm? Will it be something dumber? I'm not sure. Unless they take apart the bike. No, so the bike arm so the bike will give you a shitty version of the arm. Oh. You'll need if to you don't destroy the bike, you get no arms, no yes. legs. Yeah. Oh. Bike's gotta go if you want these bits. Um, but what I'm oh, saying is one. if you want a transforming arm, 
Uh, the parts from the bike can make you like a badass Furiosa arm, but they can't make you like a slick robot hand. Uh, For a robot hand, you're going to need to take apart a droid. So what I would right. suggest is we treat this a little bit like most video games nowadays, where you have the shitty version until you can kill a droid and steal its arm, and then you can upgrade. All right. But okay. it will require the uh, the bike to come apart. That said, this is not Serpentos' bike. This is very much Waka's bike. Or do you oh, think yeah. Serpentos had the... Did Serpentos... I mean, Serpent how did you get the bike? <laughs> um, I stole it off of a, a green space rabbit. Oh, right. Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. We, we had talked about the <laughs> the theft from Captain Bucky O'Hare. All right, dope. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, so you don't care about this. Um, no. So, in terms of what armor you have left, you still got your Mandalorian helmet and your Mandalorian chest plate, and then you've got uh, Furiosa arms and Robocop legs. Sweet. Yep. Great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, can I get it? Like, can she reshape my helmet to make it look like more like badass? What does that what does that look like to you? Um <laughs> it's uh it I'll I'll like... uh oh, hang on, I gotta get some paper so I can sketch this and put it into your file with the current helmet, which I okay. have. Like right will here. it say badass on it? <laughs> yeah. In in uh, Star Wars, just like on, on the back. Okay, so this yeah. is what we're dealing with right now. You've got your like fleur de lis pattern and some like speed lines. Right. You look a bit like um <laughs> a so medieval risky. knight. Uh, you Power got Ranger. Yeah, you, you got a bit of um, uh, I forget his name, but he was like a Mega Man X villain. You got him going on a bit, right? Uh, what uh, do you want the new helmet to look like? Do you want it to be more Robocopy? Do you want like a Judge Dread deal? Like, what's Serpentos's ideal helmet? Okay, so you're looking okay, at like it's, it's an audio go. medium. Yeah, I know, yeah, I got, it, I got, sure. it, I got, it, I got. It. I'm, I'm, I'm about to describe it. <laughs> it's yep. uh, it's Galvatron's helmet. From Transformers. Okay, I see. So we're basically looking at if you took a Magneto helmet and you stretched out the eye and mouth hole a bit and then added horns to yeah. the left and right, the center and the back. Or like yeah. a Shredder helmet if it didn't have the face guard. Yeah, that's also a good one. Yeah. 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 Okay, he, so yeah. so your face will be visible. This is a, a, a thing that Serpentos is after. Uh, oh, or do okay. you glass cover the, the front? Yeah, like like combine it. Like It, it would have kind of like, like a sharp T kind of mm -hmm. like glass but it would be very galvatron-y like cool cobra what color commander. is the like a like one of the cobra commander helmets yes all right yeah, what color yeah um uh like a like a uh like a a dull purple black so galvatron yeah it's great galvatron. all right yeah. dope uh i look forward to your conversations with orson wells playing unicron <laughs> What a world we live in. Uh, okay, cool. So yeah, so she reshapes that. Um, we'll say that um, she re reworks the rest of your armor to have that. Um, so now you're in like full purple, but the arms and legs, again, by virtue of being uh, pieces of a bike, are still very much like pistons and weird shit, just so you have something cool to upgrade four scenes from now. Um, <laughs> right. Okay, cool. So I think we'll say that's kind of your action for the trip, is like upgrading your body so that you're... You're kind of back at Waka levels, but more mechanical. That sounds okay. about right? Yeah, cool. that's fair. Yeah. Um, Vic, you've returned to a slightly different ship. Um, first of all, people seem to have plans that you didn't make, which is absurd because you're the leader. Yeah. So what the fuck? Um, <laughs> second, uh, you've actually... Vic's been through some shit in the past few sessions. Um... You have uh, obtained and achieved a goal several times now. You've uh, your life's purpose has occurred and been completed now several times. Um, I'm killing it. I'm doing great. You're doing fantastic. <laughs> but there is one major concern that that uh, I don't think we've actually fully heard Vic kind of reckon with, which is that your parents clearly got confused and went into the wrong house. And now they can't leave that house for some reason, which is confusing because you can leave a house if you want to. That's how houses work. Mm. Um, but also you weren't invited, and that's kind of a bummer. Um, how are you feeling about uh, the parent situation? Um, I think it's the next problem to be solved. We're going to bring the money back to 2-2 two, two Cups. We're going to get the grenades for blowing up i think it was 300 grenades exclusively for blowing up agrippa's front door only no no agrippa agrippa the, the oh, plan okay. was to no, no, create no. 
The plan was to put the grenades in a Kano suit with floating droids, drive it up to the door, and just blow it up. Because Agrippa would answer the door. Oh, that's right. right. She would answer yeah. the door. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And once we do that, bing, bang, boom, Vic's got his parents. Uh, and then Vic uh, asks for uh, an allowance. Um, Understandably. And- and then everything is great again. Um, so uh, you've got a pretty good plan, uh, Vic. And happily, Sweep Sweep was cannibalized, but not Dibs. So um, Dibs is continuing to make your drinks. Uh, here's a question. Do you think, now that you've kind of had some adventures, you've seen more of the galaxy, would you have made any upgrades to your boy Dibs? Or are you just content with how he looks? Uh, they would be purely uh, superficial. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's what no... I meant. <laughs> yeah, I have no expertise in, in droid maintenance or repair or anything like that. So I imagine this is like the uh, the horse armor DLC of, of costumes, you know, just more shit to add on. Yeah, well, yeah, just hear me out then because uh, uh, I, I, one, uh, he's wearing a fedora now that I picked up in Rick Dunbar's ship. So he just has a fedora. I, I also put a bola around him, around his neck. Cool. Uh, from I I don't know the ship has like a, a tickle trunk <laughs> of Mr. Dress. I would fully believe that of Rick Dunbar <laughs> and Vic Dunbar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Other way, so, you know the last names, whatever. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, and uh, uh, a pair of sick shades <laughs> just stuck to his face as well. Okay, are they like aviator shades? Are they like those big, weird, thick, like Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator Two shades? Or are they like the weird eight bit ones? Are they Kanye like they're, slatted ones? What are we dealing with? They're like Ray Bans, um, yeah. uh, with like uh, red frames. Oh man, I wanted to be him so badly in two thousand. <laughs> uh, okay, great. So you've upgraded um, dibs a bit. Yeah, that's what I um, call them too. I call those upgrades. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> great. So. Um, Dibs 2.0. Dibs is uh, making you a Dagobah mudslide um, when um, he uh, stops. And uh, you've noticed that uh, Dibs has been learning speech better than than previously, where he could just say what he was doing at any given time. And then, of course, also understood, like, basic uh, bartender. But he says, oh, uh, oh, what do you think, he, uh, what do you have him call you now these days? Um... He, he calls me Vic because everyone else has started calling me uh, Darth Joey for some reason. I don't mm. get it. Yeah, that's I don't get the sense. reference. I don't get what that's supposed to be about. I try not to respond to it. Um, so I've specifically asked one of the only people that will follow Vic's Your, your best friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I got you. Uh, to call him Vic. Yeah. Cool. So uh, he uh, says, oh, Vic, I forgot to mention there is a message waiting for you. Oh, uh, let's hear it. He says, hang on, I will have to stop shaking for a moment. And then well, he like... Finish, finish shaking then, and I'll have that. And then <laughs> Very good. So like four and a half minutes later, he yeah. pours out your drink. Um, and then uh, he just pushes like a big red message button on his chest. And um, a voice um, kind of uh, comes over uh, Shake Shake's like voice coder thing. Um, and he acts the whole thing out. So like the, the bow is like flying around and fantastic. You know, the shades stay on though. Cause they're a Ray-Ban. Um, but, uh, also I assume these are like counterfeit Ray-Ban, like the kind you would buy at a truck stop rather than like official ones. These are found Ray-Bans. <laughs> Spectacular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, the kind you dig up in animal crossing, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, he just Naturally says, occurring Ray-Bans. Renegade, baby, hey, my name's Danny O'Chin, and listen, have I got a deal for you. Word is spreading far and wide of your success, baby, and I'm just saying we gotta take it galactic, you know? People are asking for that renegade style. All manner of creatures want you, all manner of creatures want to be you, and I think there's money to be made. So, if you want Renegade to become the household name, it ought to be... Call me, Danny O'Chin, at... And then it's just like that weird, like, fucking 56K dial-up noise. Because I don't think Star Wars has phone numbers. Um, so it just screeches loudly at you, and you write it down, because you know what it means. And he says, come on, let's make them credits, baby! That's Danny O'Chin, for all of your representation needs. Uh, and then the message clicks off. Uh, Dibs, when did that message uh arrived for me how long ago 
We received it as we were fleeing oh. from the Dunbar cluster. It would seem that word of your exploits has gone far and wide. All right. Well, I don't want to have to go back there. So let's hope Danny's not from the Dunbar cluster. Um, when uh, when's, when can we contact Danny? Shake, shake. Or dibs. It is a funny thing, but I was part of a robotic bartender subscription service called Robobar, where they would update my menus frequently. I have a subspace communicator. No one bothered to ask. I could contact Mr. Ochin right now if you would like. You know what? Let's do that. It's been a while since I've done business, since the family let me do business, and I, I think it's time for me to take another crack at it. Well then, let's do business. Shake, shake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I cannot help it. One moment, please. And then he pushes, like, a subspace communication button that's under his red communication button. Honestly, no one's really looked too closely at Shake Shake this whole time. He is a marvel of modern technology. Incredibly capable droid. Yeah, very yeah. Very sexy droid. Yeah, very much so. I don't know why they gave him that ass, but, like, I'm glad they did. Um, <laughs> presumably for shake shaking. I answered my own yeah. question. All right, so he uh, he pushes the button, and um, you, you hear, like, <laughs> I guess the, the fucking ring tone on the other end. Uh, and then you just hear, um, Hello, Danny O'Chin's office. Um, Maggie O'Chin speaking. Uh, I'm hello. a secretary. Hello, Maggie. Uh, this is uh, uh, Vic Denbar. Who? Uh, you may know me better as a renegade. <laughs> oh, holy shit. I mean, oh, holy shit. Um, my, my <laughs> boss, Mr. O'Chin, no relation, has been very excited to hear from you. One moment, please. And then you just hear, like, a tremendous amount of, like, <laughs> like just, like, speaker <laughs> interference. And then, uh, it's, oh, uh, thanks, Maggie. You sure do look like a different person today. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Tyler, just say you only want to speak to the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in the scene, Ryan. <laughs> uh, so Danny's like, hey, renegade baby, sorry about the help. She's quite a handful, but oh man, quite a looker. As long as there are no follow-up questions. Anyway, uh, uh, you see, a man of action, truly. No, Maggie, I can't see him. We're on the phone. The space phone. So listen, uh, Renegade, baby, hey. I'm glad you called because I already started printing and distributing merch. And if you didn't want it, it was going to be a real problem. Oh, man. Glad I didn't miss out. Yeah, so listen. <laughs> um, all I need from you is a legally binding I want to sell things over this phone call. Uh, Maggie's a notary. Um, oh, so, uh, that's great. She'll handle that. But, uh, Renegade, I'm just saying you could be a brand baby. Why, why stop at winning tourneys when you could win hearts and wallets? That sounds, that sounds great. Um, you know, to be honest, uh, my, my original source of income, uh, has, uh, been temperamental lately. Uh, and so it'd be nice to have a side hustle and, you know, the Renegade, uh, character and mythos and way of life has been something that I've been looking to kind of market and brand for a while anyway, you know, because <laughs> anyone can live the renegade life is what I've been saying all this yep. time. Yeah, yeah, man. And I'm a leader of people. Uh, and, and, and what better way to lead than by example uh, the, to do things, you know, the renegade way. Okay, so we're all ready to go on all the merch, but I, I need some answers from you about a few key things. Sure, hit me. Okay, so... We've got a really cool t-shirt planned, mm -hmm. but I need to know what your key renegade catchphrase is. Uh, it's usually just me saying my name. Uh, so it's usually just renegade. Can you put that, that tone of voice on printed onto a shirt? Can, I sure can. I have the no fear font. Got it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, great. We also have a fragrance ready to go. It smells a little bit like if elderberries drowned during spring break. What should we call it? Probably renegade. <laughs> I all right. I, got, I, I have a feeling I got the answers to all your questions today, Danny. Maggie! Maggie! Good news! The placeholders were right! Um, 
<laughs> you hear him shuffle some papers <laughs> near the mic. Uh, he says, okay, uh, last thing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, people are going to start interviewing me, Danny O'Chin, about um, what the renegade life is. Mm -hmm. So what I need from you is the perfect day to be a renegade. So like, what are the... Like, what is your perfect ideal renegade day so people know what to emulate? And I can start making those sweet deals with those tiny little cards that you find at various hotels that tell you things you can do in town for 10% off. Perfect. Okay. Well, I'll tell you right now, any day can become the perfect renegade day. All you got to do is take charge. You got to grab life by the horns, you know? You got you to gotta, uh, uh, live life to the fullest. Uh, you've got to... <laughs> it's just using all of the most empty... <laughs> fucking <laughs> worthless slogans uh you know you no gotta fear. take things you gotta take things one day at a time no fear it is what it is um and so on and so forth you know what i'm saying yeah absolutely and what's the logo it needs uh, to be a picture rather picture? than text it i'll send you i'll send you some headshots <laughs> what pose do you want um you can do you want like you use a yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the future or past. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's confusing <laughs> to me. But um, yeah, like what uh, if, if we were to put you in one key pose that would be the renegade pose? What is it? How many guns have you ever seen someone hold at once before? <laughs> two and a half. Renegade holds three uh, plus two swords. <laughs> Okie dokie. Yeah. Maggie, take it to print. Okay. Uh, all right, well, this has been a very good business dealing. You'll get your 3% of the profits uh, by mail. What, 3%? <laughs> yep. Uh, is that up for negotiation? I mean, you already gave a verbal yes. Uh, Renegade, if you want to try and <laughs> negotiate, I'm, I'm going to need a back end deal. Back end cunning deal. Cunning plus negotiation. Or no, I guess that's a presence skill. So presence and negotiation. Perfect. The only time this particular role will ever happen on this yeah. show. Uh, so that's two green. <laughs> I just have two presence. Great. Uh, I'm going to say it's three purple because you're clearly out of your league. Yep. Oh, definitely. I was going to say just as like a metagaming note, like the answer to can we negotiate could also be no. And Vic would be like, I came away with a win here. Uh, I will say... <laughs> Danny O'Chin is about as bad at this as Vic. Perfect. So he actually well, thinks just... he has to negotiate before he can get away with robbing you. Got it. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to add any destiny or anything like that. We also haven't talked about how much. Yeah, time. I'm looking at it right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got um, too tied up in our story. That's okay. I'm not going to add any. Stupid this is McGee. fucking worthless <laughs> role right now. So uh, <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. For the record, would anyone else like to add destiny to this? Because he might think this is useless, but you don't have to. I'll do it. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I My can man. count on you, Adam. So, like, like Serpentos kind of walks by and he kind of just does like in his new helmet. And he's just like, huh? Like gives him like a thumbs up. And, yeah. and that has like helped you. That inspires Vic. And he <laughs> yeah, just gets yeah. too close to like the microphone on the call. and be like 50%. <laughs> All right, uh, we have four light side points and one dark side point. So you guys currently have uh, four available to you. You're using one, so that will flip to me. So now I have two, you have three. Okay, I've adjusted my dice <laughs> accordingly. Get them dollars. Oh, yeah. Total, one failure. <laughs> <laughs> 50% interesting number. What about, and Maggie's going to get real mad, what if I go to five? Five? Uh, uh, it's like 50, but no one wants zero percent, right? 40. No, I'm sticking to five. Four. Uh, <laughs> six. Five. Ten. Seven. Seven. Forty. Fifty. Two, three, sold. <laughs> Got a <him>. fucking yes. <laughs> I'm high five and dibs across and, the orange. And you, you just hear like you could have gone for a better one. He's like, shut up, Maggie. Was I did Maggie my best. 
I mean, I don't know, tune in. You'll have to buy the Expanded Universe trilogy that deals with their story. Mrs. I guess. Doubt Maggie. <laughs> yeah, it only came out on N64, but, you know, they tried. Uh, they tried hard. Uh, okay, cool. So um, with th- uh, 3% of the profits from the Renegade line, uh, Danny O'Chin uh, takes your, your verbal sign-off and tells you that the merchandise will flood markets yesterday because he already printed most of it. Perfect. Um, so like get up and go. Uh, so with that, you you click off, and uh, now there truly is only one, well, two mysteries left. One, how to get an allowance back, and two, yeah. what's the deal with this Darth Joey business? Yeah, it's a weird joke that I am not getting. Yeah. Uh, so you you kind of um, what what's a, what dumb outfit is Vic wearing today? Uh, Vic found a uh, jumpsuit. Um, so it's like a custodial or engineering kind of jumpsuit, very much like meant for like doing... Yeah, it's like Shatterstar wears and a yeah, few like other Yeah, like dirty, groups, yeah. gruff work in. Um, but because Vic uh, doesn't do hard work or anything like that and needs to look distinct, uh, the sleeves have been cut off. Um, <laughs> he's, so it's a, it's, a jump, it's a sleeveless jumpsuit. Brash uh, is going to be so mad. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> and uh, he did find a necktie to throw on there as well. <laughs> uh, just to class it up a little. So he's, he's like very blue collar, but also still like stylish. Yeah, and re- ready for a job interview. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, not sort of for a job, but, you know, for business. So <laughs> you uh, you straighten your tie. You look a bit like Fred Flintstone because it's just like tie. Absolutely, jumpsuit. I do. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, you decide to go go talk to, to Brash to see what's up. Uh, Brash, so you've been piloting the ship. Um, you're stuck in the cockpit. Uh, you got Palpatine's lightsaber, and you can feel the situation starting to 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 fall away. Um, that said, again, it's been a few days. So, uh, how do you think you spent those few days? Uh, well, I guess the big question would be: Has Engage told me what's going on, or am I still completely unaware? Of I don't think there's ever been a chance, given that you're in the cockpit, for Engage to go find you because. Uh, Serpentos has been keeping a close eye on him, trying to win him over. So I think for you, it's still business as usual, but you can feel the disturbance in the force. Uh, and admittedly, you've also been kind of worried that Waka might kill you, and now that he's fully Serpentos, the odds are... I mean, I don't know he's fully Serpentos, but... Yeah. I, I feel like you know that now. I'll say you've got oh, that okay, much information, cool. but you haven't received any... Like, Engage hasn't had a chance to to talk to you. Then uh, I would guy, say, you, you have a, a quick question. Could I go pee real quick? <laughs> I'm so yes, sorry. Yes, it's all good. I'm going to deal with Ryan to the end of the episode. So, Godspeed, Night of Tomorrow. <laughs> Please cut um, this out. Uh, as, I promise you. you know, it's all in, baby. Uh, as Engage ah, walks to the bathroom. I, he just, he just, I have a lot of lubricant. I got it as spell. Hold on, I'll be right back. Real quick, bye! <laughs> he also uh, mentions that uh, Waka is gone and now it's Serpentos. So you got that as Engage walked by, but unfortunately you heard Serpentos following him. Um, but also, you now that you're attuned to the Force, you're, you're starting a lot of... It's, it's unfortunately like um, any conspiracy theorist who one of their conspiracies turns out to be true. Where, like, you've had all these ill feelings for a long time being kind of the middle child and dealing with... Like, all the weird court politics um, and, uh, like, all the Faldine business and everything else. And now you can actually feel it. And um, there is definitely a disturbance in the Force. All right, then it's this couple of days, Brash is going to use the time because he's got to get crafty. And he actually knows a lot about being crafty when other people are more powerful Mm -hmm. than him because his siblings were a lot more powerful than him and constantly tried to have him murdered. Really, he's just back in his own backyard now. (laughs) It's yeah, I, he thought he could get away, but everybody goes home. Um, so I think he'd be using Nyx. Yeah. Because uh, Nyx, it, like, he'd give Nyx the 5,000 credits he's got in case they need a bailout. Like, Nyx, he's kind of all in on trusting Nyx at this point because he's, like, saved his life there, yep. team. Uh, and I think what he'd have done, I mean, A, he'd want to get robes because he feels like black robes are appropriate, and I feel like the Emperor wouldn't shut up about it. And he would need a pair for him and a pair for Vic that he could force Vic to wear later. So that it would match. Uh, and then I would say he also is probably taking meetings with the people he knows Waka has, like, threatened to kill at some point. So mm-hmm. the people he thinks he could create essentially, like, 
an alliance he could be in charge of because he's aware that if he has to fight Waka alone, he's dead. But if everyone on the ship fights Waka, maybe only most of us die. I will also say that, um, again, the, the treachery of Serpentos remains un, unrevealed. However, at this point, uh, whenever Vic isn't around, they do treat you kind of like the captain. So at this point, like, the, it's not that you need to convince them to get on side. A lot of them are, like, on side, I think, okay. with, with you. Cool. Then what I would do is uh, I would have Sterling try to help me come up with something that would help me be able to sneak away if Serpentos decides to turn. Uh, and then I'd probably try to put the hackers on figuring out if there's a way we can just, like, temporarily deactivate Waka if stuff goes bad, just because I don't know Serpentos versus Waka, but it seems bad and he's tried to kill people and two two cups has a big army. Well, and part and parcel with that, um, Ryan, I'd also like you to consider what your strategy for the arrival at two two cups place is, because everyone else is tied up in their own shit. So, um, as you kind of think through your resources, um, tell me which ones you want to allocate to um, disabling Waka and which ones you want to allocate to um, two two cups. Okay, two two if cups. necessary. Yeah, yeah. So I think two two cups is a scenario where I just want to pay him. I don't want to try to rob two two cups. I think it's way easier to get in, get out, and realistically, we'll make more money killing Agrippa and robbing Agrippa than we would from two two cups. Mm -hmm. Also, two two cups is v scary, and it's had a lot of time to plan for this. So I think it would be. Oh man. Okay, I would have Sterling. Sterling would be my ace in the hole there. I feel like Sterling and Gungan Ramsey, it'd be like figuring out a stealth suit, figuring out something that could get us out of there or bring somebody secretly to the meeting. Like bring mm. Sterling with the repeater rifle or whatever, who's invisible as the backup for the two two cups meeting. Uh, I got some bad news for you on that stealth suit front. Hmm. Vic destroyed it during, uh, or you, did you wear it or he, he wore it? I wore it. it. Okay, it's gone. You you trashed that shit uh, on your Okay. <laughs> but Tom, what what do I have in terms of stuff to use then? Because my, like, I've I'm got yep. the hackers and I've got... So you've got hackers, you've got Sterling. If your goal is to sneak Sterling in, that's totally a thing we can do. Just the stealth suit is out. So um, I will tell you, you can't build a droid on this ship, but with spare parts... You could probably build a Trojan Gronk. Okay, yes. I am Trojan Gronking Sterling, mm -hmm. uh, who will be in the Gronk. As I think, I, yeah, I locked the armory, so I'll take some guns yep. out and give those to Sterling. Uh, Nix is also armed. <laughs> I have to determine Nix doesn't die. That's a major goal for him. Uh, and I think I would leave the hackers on the Waka problem. Like, I'd yeah, like, that he's a sense. robot and he has robot parts. Go be smart in a room somewhere. Cool. Because that's what he learned back on Faleen from the family corporation was like, if you have scientists, you just sort of send them to a room and you say, solve the problem. And then you look good. And then they do. So black robes, Trojan Gronk, hackers are on the problem. And then it's just trying to figure out my weird powers. I feel like he'd sit there and if he could feel the force, it'd just be like, sure. what is the force? Bad okay. emperor teaching. So, um, so Sterling is in, like, you, you're you trying to meditate, which is something you've never done because I think on Falline that would be considered ridiculous. Um, I feel like uh, Falline are the, uh, the corporate yoga studio where, like, namaste is printed in, like, swirling script on the wall, but they're like, you have an hour... And then you need to get the fuck out. We have another class coming. So um, you're trying to meditate and it kind of sucks. And it also kind of sucks because the emperor is in your head constantly. So, you know, you have a thought and he's like, no, you must empty your head like a vessel of darkness. Also, don't mind me. And then you hear like a fridge door slam. But it's, here's the thing, though. I need a, I need a plan because everyone is going to try to kill me or something. Yes, that's what being a Sith Lord is. Uh, yeah, but you're, you're dead, right? Maybe. So I feel like maybe we shouldn't follow your plan. Because hey, whoa, dead, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, but like, I have more plans. This is part of it. The lightsaber thing. You becoming Emperor. Me helping. That's part of it. I have a different plan as well. I have lots of plans. So okay, it's well fine. My problem is I don't even have one plan. I okay, just well, let's have you. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Let's start with that. Now, you need a Sith name. 
Um, and before you can come up with one, um, the door opens and you just hear a clomping and um, a, a Gronk droid walks in, but it's like a full-sized man wearing a Gronk droid to like roughly his crotch and then Gronk legs up to like his knees. Just and then it's just incredibly like... Incredibly long Gronk legs? <laughs> uh, no, they just stop at his knees. Oh, and then the oh. rest is just pants. Like it's clearly a man in a suit. And he's like, oh, um... Hey, uh, it's me, Gronk. I've come to Gronk it up. Uh, <clears throat> Gronk! Is this uh, uh, good? Is this what you need? Well, I, I think, uh, first of all, they don't say Gronk it up. They just say Gronk. And they don't really Wait, put what? any emotion on it. I feel like you can just tone it back a little bit. Also, those are definitely your legs. Can we, like, put a stool in there or something so you can wheel yourself around? Well, like I mean, I... children's hover cars? I, I, I could... And then he, like, clearly crouches slightly, and it fits perfectly. He's like, this is just, uh, it's real inconvenient for me. I don't love it. Okay, well, you can stand now, then. It's just more important for when oh. the murderers are around. Yeah, it's a lot of just, like, Gronk. That's all you got to do. Okay, and, sorry, he's, like, some kind of, like, football player, is that right? Well, I mean, space football is very popular, so he got named after the droids because you can't knock him over, either. Yeah, I understand. I mean, well, after they outlawed uh, pod racing... Which I learned in that second video game. All right, cool, cool. All right. Um, here's a question, though. How do I refill the martini machine in here? And you hear, like, sloshing. I wasn't aware you had a martini machine. That, that's, uh... Damn. Uh, okay, do you know what? You're going to have to talk to Gungan Ramsey about that. You can't talk to Dibs, because that'll blow the Gronk thing, and I don't know who knows. So we want to keep that on the, on the down low. So Gungan Ramsey can make you, if not a martini, I'm sure we can get... Uh, Spasquila or something. I mean, you know, I guess in a pinch, phrasing and such. Okay, great. Uh, well, my uh, martini tank in here is almost empty, and you hear him slosh again, and you realize that like most of the body of the Gronk might just be a martini keg. <laughs> great. Uh, you also didn't I, need this fuel tank, right? It's cool that I use this. Well, the fuel tank may have been useful if we needed to like set fire to something for a distraction or make an explosion. So. Oh, here's a conflicting idea. Okay, yeah, go. Just tell him you need the the hardest alcohol you can get in there. This is how I get ants. And he just, like, nods full body Gronk style. Uh, and then he drops down and just walks out. And then just at the last minute, he tries to, like, look over his shoulder dramatically and instead just slams the Gronk body against the doorframe. It says, Gronk. <laughs> and then he just, like, stands up and clearly walks away like that TV from... Um... Uh, Cloudy with a chance of meatballs, which is very dumb and kind of what a human sized Gronk droid would look like. Yeah, and Brash looks down at the lightsaber and he goes, That was my best plan because you kept <laughs> distracting me. I am Okay, that. I'm sorry, all right? Can Normally. I have one of your plans? Okay, this one's pretty good. So, do you have access to a trade federation? <laughs> uh, no. Well, fuck, I don't know then. If you can't start a trade war on a seemingly peaceful planet, I don't know how you do anything. Look, the important thing is, you have allies. Good. You can betray them later, replace them with more powerful allies. You have an apprentice. Good. But you need a name that will make people scared of you. All right. Well, you were scared of the Jedi, right? Yes. They're the scariest thing. What if my name is Darth Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> then rise, Darth Jedi. But then sit back down and meditate. <laughs> yeah, I've got to keep flying this thing or we could hit a planet. Things are so much more complicated in your world than mine. You know... Back in my day, we had these things called battle droids. And then he just starts, like, droning on about the Clone Wars. Um, <laughs> you manage to mostly tune him out, and uh, Nyx comes into the, the cabin. Um, and he uh, he takes a seat next to you, and you just hear, ah, But then I, I used an old Jedi named Cypher Diaz. I used him to, to say that I needed a bunch of clones made, but he'd been dead for years. And you just kind of tune him back out. And... Um, uh, Nix, uh, like, hands you an incredibly refreshing non-alcoholic beverage. And he's like, these are the only two left on the ship. 
And I drink it and I say, thank you, Joris Kabeev. I'm sorry, they, I'm just hearing weird stories. Uh, uh, yeah, I understand, I understand. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of those going around. Um, but listen, uh, so I know things are getting a bit crazy on the ship. Uh, I've almost had my eyes scooped out a couple times, I almost died a bunch. Um, Agrippa lent me and, and Shatterstar and uh, our dearly departed dibs to you a while back. Um but I gotta say, I'm a uh, I'm 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 Team Brash, uh, and um, I think I, I hope I've made that clear. Um, I don't know about Shatterstar. I hope she'll come around. She uh, she really hates her her sister uh, Shatterson, who uh, works for uh, Tutu Cups. So like, to kill her, she might be really on side. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, I feel like there's like something here. Maybe, and, uh, you know, we got another couple days in hyperspace, and I may just be a male courtesan, and this might be a classic courtesan falls for their John kind of deal. Like, ever since you, like, snapped that necklace case on my hand, um, I was like, ah, that kind of sucks, but, like, also handsome, I don't know. But um, before uh, before we enter mortal danger again, I, I just, I need to know, is, is there something here? And Pop Team's like, oh, wait, oh, um, um... Uh, yes. Uh, Je Jedi do really well when they fall in love. That's a big thing for the Jedi. So you, you should have big emotions. I was going to say, and he's just saying that in my ear as yes. I'm kissing Nyx. <laughs> like, he's just right. immediately in on it. John Williams' fashion. Love Across the Stars comes up orchestrally, but we can't afford it. So, Ryan, what's the song that plays instead? Uh, uh And I Will Always Love You. You're goddamn <laughs> right it is. Yeah, yeah. And and then he leans back and he says, Originally, I just thought it was a game about getting you to fall in love with me. Damn me if I didn't fall in love with you. Uh, and then he just like <laughs> falls out of the Sith robe he'd put on and the camera like pans back. And then he pushes you back against your chair for saying, he's like, no. And then he adjusts the light so it hits you in the dramatic way and he says, yes! Uh, and then could, this, he, could this, sorry, could this be a cover of I Will Always Love You by Fall Out Boy featuring Missy Elliott? <laughs> Is that a real song? Probably. Okay, you. Let me switch that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's from the uh, the Bodyguard remake by uh, Paul Feig and his team. Uh, it's just like Melissa McCarthy is the Kevin Costner part. Uh, it's great. Uh, anyway, um, so with that, um, as the, the ship makes its final uh, sort of descent into um, the Ico system, um, Brash and Nix finally uh, give in to the professional slash game slash eventually just realize they actually like each other feelings um, and have like pretty explicit sex for a Star Wars movie uh, <laughs> in the cockpit. Um, is there any dice yeah, it's, rolling that's it's going cut on from here? The, or? I was say, it's cut from the version released in China. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Instead, like, a, a Chinese scientist comes in and says, I saved the ship, and everyone's like, cool, good work. It's just Iron Man 3. Um, that's the version, <laughs> that's what gets spliced in instead of the sex scene. It's just all of Iron Man 3. Um, but, um, yes, uh, as... Uh, Brash tries to ignore Palpatine going, good, good, in his head. Um, the uh, ship drops out of hyperspace um, and is immediately under fire uh, from a number of pirate vessels. Um, and Brash, as you, you look up from Nyx, uh, you see that uh, the small moon of Rykos is under full assault from a combined force of pirates and the Empire. The wee baby Seamus is rocked by blaster fire as um, a Z-95 headhunter, which is like an X-Wing if it was worse, and in video games, um, just sprays fire across the bow. Um, Darth Jedi, you are rocked out of your chair, uh, both by what Nyx was in the process of doing and by uh, the, the blaster fire. Um, immediately, um, the ship starts to, to shake, and um, you realize that you've entered a war zone. 
it would seem that Rykos is under siege uh, by a local garrison and um, a pirate crew. What do you do? Well, I mean, I'm fully nude, but we're in a combat zone. So I am going to, like, activate the shields. And, like, I, I can't even sit because Nyx is in the chair. So there's just, like, a nude, hot-looking green Christian, <laughs> Christian Ronaldo just, like, flying the ship, cranking the shields. And then I just announce over the comms to everyone, like, well, we've entered a war zone and I don't have pants on. So if everyone could please get to the guns, we will all baby not die. Um, so Nyx immediately, like crawls out of the chair and like looks at all the the panels for something he can do but he's never flown a starship so it's just like if any of us were in the cockpit of a plane we're just like okay there's a lot of dials and switches eh so instead he just tosses you your robe great i'll put that on cool you feel like a cool sith except you're still not wearing pants cuz i feel like you've got like an undertaker style like it's it's a full duster but there's no arms um yeah but also you're not wearing deepest, the rest of your clothes so it's the just... deepest front v that you'll ever see oh okay i was just imagining it's just like literally the over robe and then it's just you naked under it and you still have to find your clothes eventually okay i'm cool with that done yeah great uh it's like a like a weird armless kimono um but sith mm. um and Nyx, like, is standing by with pants, but is doing that thing where he's, like, actively aware you're too busy for pants. So he's just kind of, like, standing nearby. Uh, meanwhile, Vic, you've just received a face full of Dagobah mudslide. And something occurs to you as you get splattered with this, this delicious frozen beverage that you probably certainly invented. It just... You know, when it was something you could only get at a proper bar, it was special. Hmm. But now, it's just, you get it all the time. It's you great. Know? <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> but as, as it splashes your face and, and soaks into your dope-ass uh, formal jumpsuit attire, uh, I think you realize for the first time that you might be, be getting a little tired of Dagobah mudslides. Also, this one is ruined, and that's... I'm not a fan uh, of getting them splashed in my face. Not at all. That for free. Um, uh, you realize that uh, the ship keeps rumbling in a way it normally only rumbles when you're under attack. Now, here's a thing that only you have access to. You still have Rick's ship, mm -hmm. but only you can fly it because it is coded to the genetic sequencing of your admittedly Blood wide line. family. Yeah. Um... So if you want to go try and fuck some shit up separately, you could do that, or you can try and make yourself useful on board the ship. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to open the comms and talk to uh, Brash and be like, uh, Brash, uh, you've, you've flown us into some kind of horrible war zone. Can you put the ship back? Yeah, afraid I can't do that. Your parents are in the war zone, so if you wanted to get them out, then we're going to have to head on in. Uh, and if, if you could see the video feed... Brash has one leg straight out like a figure skater, and Nix is just sliding <laughs> pants onto it and then trading. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, Vic is like, uh, uh, it seems like it's just a bad time. Maybe we can come back and rescue my parents later when it's safer. <laughs> well, that's a really great idea. Uh, Tom, uh, what's the deal with the hyperdrive? Can I just turn us around and crank us out? Uh, you could, uh, but here, here's the dilemma. So you've dropped back into the Icos system. Uh, if you'll remember, Icos is a massive gas giant uh, with kind of a beautiful green and blue and white swirling atmosphere um, that is orbited by two moons uh, that are in a synchronous orbit. So they're always one gas giant away from each other. Um, Rykos is Tutu Cup's planet, which is the one that's currently under siege. You know that on the other side of Icos is Veros, uh, which is um, a grip of the Blues planet. Uh, and if you'll remember, they both are at war over uh, mining rights to um, incredibly valuable resources deep within the core of the gas giant. Here's the problem. The only way you guys can gain access to Agrippa's place is with Tutu Cups' help, and it would seem that he's in desperate trouble. So you could just fuck off. But that might be the end of the series. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, also, that wouldn't be what Brash should be thinking if he looks at the scenario. 
I, I couldn't remember whose planet was whose, but it's just the planet. It's not the whole system. They're not battling both uh, moons. It's just this. No, one. it's just Rikos. You get the sense that maybe someone narked on him just to fuck up his shit a bit. And then I would hear that emperor voice in my head and what I know, and I'd go, well, Darth Joey, it's time for us to make a powerful ally. Uh, and then I would sweep my top knot back and like, tear the <laughs> the robe open even more to expose the chest and then both hands out like a conductor i would take the controls and start flying into the war zone to try to get down to the planet dope dope uh says the voice in your head um cool so you begin to fly into the war zone um you see a mix of z95 headhunters and uh tie fighters but you can tell they're local garrison these look like old ass tie fighters this is not Top of the line, this is, like, post-Revenge of the Sith, like, clearly backwater ships. So you get the sense it's probably a local garrison, not the entire Imperial Navy. Um, Serpentos. Mm -hmm. um, you have just finished uh, the calibrations on your arm. Here's a question. Which one is your cannon arm and which one is your regular arm? Um... I'm, I'm trying to think what Galvatron has. Uh, the right arm is the... Um, gun arm, the, I think. The, the, the gun arm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. left arm, just for my brain, is it still sweep sweep, Tom? And he's got to upgrade from there? Or does he have just like a normal... Yes! Uh, no, I like that a lot because the sweep sweep arms are those like uh, medical droid arms. So they're just real <laughs> spindly. So you've got like one full cannon arm and one like stick figure arm that a child drew. Oh, man. <laughs> with like a Lego hand on the end of it. But All right. All right. <laughs> The trick will be to find the cool droid to strip for parts. Um, so yeah, so you, you've got your cannon arm. Um, what do you call your, your gun arm? Um, I call it the nemesis. Very cool. It, uh, it fires with the power of disappointed Star Trek fans. Uh, it's very, <laughs> very impressive. Um, okay, so uh, the ship begins to rock. Now, you're waiting for the absolute perfect time to overtake Brash, who, again, to your eye, is a braggart and, uh, like, I like to, to use antiquated terms, like a bit of a fop. Like, he just seems like he's all about finding his light and wearing, like, fancy outfits. Um, and as far as you've seen, aside from... Well, I mean, you weren't even there for that because that was Waka. You haven't seen him do anything cool, really. <laughs> I Waka am aware saw of... him lightning shit. Oh, I wait, are you see, aware though. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's it's when when Serpentos is like when they switch back and forth. It's like there's a window. I was gonna say technically, why well, was lightning from the motorcycle? Waka was being carried away, so Waka didn't see lightning. Fair enough. So you're pretty sure he has something, and the lightsaber thing was concerning uh, because Serpentos, your last waking memory as yourself was taking one of these things to the head. So these stupid laser swords are a real concern. Um, but you do also understand that you probably need to be on side for a bit uh, until you can find the right time. And honestly, if the ship blows up, you'll all suffocate in vacuum. Not ideal. Right, right. Um, your helmet has, like, enough to keep you alive for, like, a little bit, but not enough. This is like a Sandra Bullock gravity situation. You could get to another place to die, but... Right, right. right. Um, <laughs> whereas my friends and I called it space problems. Uh, so you have space problems. Um, so with the ship under attack, uh, you have Waka's memories, so you know that Serpentos is really good at the guns. What do you do? Um, well, right now it's like the two ships are kind of connected, right? So uh, currently um, Vic has a separate ship attached to the back that you've never flown, so you don't really know what the deal with that one is. Right. Um, the, the ship is a, think like, um, it's a, what's the best way to describe this? Um, it's like a, uh, thinner Millennium Falcon. So, okay. uh, if you remember Dash Rendar's ship, it's like kind of a, a large kind of, uh, almost an oval body with mm -hmm. one long arm with a big cannon on it that's controlled by the gunner and then top and bottom guns like the Falcon. So previously, when you'd been Waka, you'd taken over top or bottom guns, and you'd plugged into that to give you better right. targeting, rather than that stupid, like, red grid bullshit from Star Wars. <laughs> so, like, but with it attached, that's like, the, the, the two ships can't move properly if they're attached Say, like that, right? Tom, here's an, here's an awkward question, because Brash would know this. 
is having the Vic Viper attached making the ship less maneuverable in a war zone. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm going to break canon briefly to talk about physics. <laughs> uh, you're in space, so technically, no. In Star Wars, everything flies like an old World War II fighter craft because that's what Lucas was kind of using. Uh, so I'm going to say for the purposes of this that no, it does not, in fact, give you huge amounts of drag. That said, that's something... We know, but not necessarily something you would know. What are you thinking? What's what's uh? uh well, I kind of are you thinking of jettisoning it or stealing if it? Brash thought its added mass was slowing down, like the inertial dampeners or the ship's ability to turn. He would jettison anything. Brash knows it isn't. I'm curious what Serpentos is thinking. Um, I okay. So I want to convince uh Vic to get into that ship, and my plan is to tell people. Like, you know, two, two guns will survive better than just one gun. But I also want to, um, to ensure that our bargaining chip with two, two cups is still good. I want to take all the uh, hackers with me onto the ship to protect them. So you want to shatter star. So you want to basically jump onto the Vic Viper with a full crew and escape. Is that correct? Uh, and, and stick around and help them. Right. I will warn you, the Vic Viper is like a, uh, it's like a two-seater car. So you can take okay. one person with you, but it was very much a douchebag's, like, uh, for lack of better term, I'm nervous about the size of my dick mobile. Um, All right. So you can fit one other person in with you. So you can take one person, but uh, you will be at a disadvantage. Or if you think, if the goal is just to, like, help this ship survive, you could hop in and try and flying gun admittedly it does have weapons and you're likely a better pilot than vic so it's up to you uh okay so i want to go to the hackers mm -hmm. and um is is there a hacker who is uh who could be easily bought out so like a disenfranchised is, hacker yeah like so like I, I i walk into the hackers and i'm just like uh uh, hello, uh, it seems we're under attack. Uh, just a quick question. <laughs> is, there, uh, is there anybody here that could, uh, you know, be easily bought out and say, uh, work for me? <laughs> um, looks at you and he just goes, yum, yum. Uh, I need you, sir, to please roll me a... Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Waka just walked up to my anti-Waka squad. This yep. Is uh, well, I, don't, so, I don't know that. I don't no, know I know. No, no, no. You know, you're playing it out exactly right. Um, so, uh, Ryan, uh, yeah. I need you to please roll me a presence and... Well, what do you think? Uh, would it be charm? Would it be coercion? Could we go with leadership, leadership on this one? I'd I feel take like, leadership. Yeah, and then Adam... So here's the thing. Normally, we would take like a presence and... Co or, like a will and coercion... But we also didn't have you roll a new character sheet for Serpentos. So can you please roll me, um, we'll take Athletics and Brawn, and we're going to treat those like Will and Coercion. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. So I have a, a two Brawn and one is in Athletics. Okay, cool. So that's one yellow, one green. Um, but hold on your roll. I want to see what Ryan's roll is to know what you need to beat. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, I have three presents and two leadership. Okay. So, so it's a green and two yellows. Yep. Um, I also automatically add one blue die to leadership because I am extra charming and I remove one black die from any leadership checks. Cool. This is going to be a two purple for me because I think they're pretty on side here's the thing the hackers kind of have their own agenda and no one's really helping them with that but at the same time they kind of respect that you're the person running the ship so yeah we'll say two purple one success one advantage okay uh, uh all right uh serpentos go ahead and roll please uh do i just just those or do I have any, um uh... i will say it's a Based on Ryan's success, uh, so it's one yellow, one green. I'm going to say one red, one purple. So one red for his success, one purple for his advantage. Which I know is an upgrade, but given that it's like a weird, like, I want to talk you out of a thing you've already agreed to check. 
Okay. Can I use a destiny point? Sure can, bud. Um, so when, uh, when the bike was taken apart, the righteous indignation, um, they managed to save the fork gun, but, uh, and, and you know how I had the rapid fire death button on there. Yep. So, uh, Shatterstar who's on my side, cause I agreed to kill her sister if I got planet side. Um, she kind of rigged it into, do you remember in uh, rogue one, that one dude who has like that backpack, like Gatling gun. Yeah, 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 totally. So, uh, she's with me. And when I ask this question, she kind of steps into the doorway with the gun pointed at them. So I want that to be like, to persuade them to be like, follow me or my gun will shoot all of you. Okay. Um, so you'd previously threatened to kill her with the righteous indignation, I believe. So I'm going to need you. Uh, no, it was Serpentos. You declared yourself as Serpentos and then did it. Um, <laughs> So uh, I'm going to need you to please roll me a... Is this a roll before the roll? Yeah, yeah, this is a roll before the roll. Uh, basically, I'm going to make your use of this destiny point contingent on whether or not you talked her into doing this. All right. um, there isn't an intimidation in this game, which is fucking bananas. Um, so I think, um, Adam, do you, have points, do you have points in Skullduggery or in Coercion? Oh, coercion is intimidation in the Genesis system. Uh, oh, my, my coercion looks like it's... Uh, I'm going to guess that's two. It's two or three. It it's, looks like it might be two. Yeah, so I can, yeah, yeah I'm I, sorry. I, I, we, because we're all doing this remotely now, I had to scan your sheet and send it to you. But I have your sheet right is it, here. Is it two? Uh, coercion, coercion is... Yes, yeah, yeah, it's two. Two? Okay. So that's two for coercion and um, two for will. So that's, uh, fuck, man, that's double yellow. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say it's one purple because you already threatened to kill her, and now you have robot arms. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. One success, two advantages. Um, Shatterstar in the present locks the gun um and in my favorite line from predator just says gonna have me some fun uh and she spins up the um spins up the barrel it doesn't fire it just looks really intimidating and if it were a video game it would mean she's holding l2 so she could just press r2 if she needed to we all know what's up <laughs> except for ryan who's on xbox uh so um yeah go ahead and roll now your intimidate the uh Intimidate the hackers, check. Right. Hey, that... I borrowed Tyler's PS3 and played The Last of Us this week, so I know my L2 R2s. He knows. I'm just saying that on PS3, they made you use L1 and R1 for chain guns, which was very dumb. Also, yay, Last of Us. That's going to be a fun week next week. Go ahead and roll. Uh, so just to confirm, it was one green, one yellow, one purple, one red? Yes, sir. Uh, nope, but you spent a destiny point, so you're upgrading your other green to a yellow. So two yellows. Uh, our previous role was to determine whether or not you could get that extra yellow. Uh, all right, okay, all right. Okay. It's the world's simplest system. You just carry the three, divide by pi, and you've got your answer. Well, okay, one failure. Um, so, um, William J. Lepanto Main comes forward and says... No, no, of course not. And then he leans in and says, I'm very interested. Uh, he says, I'm going to show you the door. And he starts walking you out the door. Now, we as players know you failed that check, but Serpentos does not. So what does Serpentos say to William J. Lepantomane? And he just said, like, follow me. Yeah, he's just, like, led you outside. Then as soon as you're outside, he's like, all right, so what's the deal? Uh, so he's like, oh, oh, hey, I was just joking. And then he, like, walks out being like, I need you to come aboard the Vic Viper. I have some business we need to take care of. You and the hackers are in danger. And um, he just kind of nods at you and says, all right, count me in. Uh, give me a couple minutes to grab my gear and I'll be good to go. <laughs> no funny stuff. I do have a... <laughs> Thank I you promise. Have, I do have a, uh, a, a fork gun Gatling gun. Yeah, the my camera best. pans to Shatterstar. It's just like... <laughs> yeah. She's like... It has a lot more kick than I thought. I'm really, this is exhausting. Why would anyone carry this? 
uh, okay, and I'll say, meet me on the Vic Viper. I'm, uh, I'm going to get Vic. And I, and I run to get Vic. Okay. Because he has to fly it, right? You're, you're I... correct. No, you're, well, I mean, you can try and hack it if you want. I have no hacking skills. Adam, I mean, well, he the hacker said can. two seats. <laughs> I know, I'm holding to it. If You can pack three people in. It's just someone oh. sitting on a lap or between a seat. Oh, oh okay, all right. Um, all right, well, then I'll just say, hey, I'm going to go over there. You hack the ship, hacker. And uh, I'll meet you in the Vic Viper. Uh, Shatterstar, you, you put away the the cool gun. <laughs> and, 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 and just, like, stay hidden. I'll, like, I'll come back for you. All right. But we're going to kill my sister, Shatterson, right? Oh, oh, for sure, yes. I'm, I'm a man of my word. Serpentos does not lie. And then I, like, ah, and I kind of go away. <laughs> I mean, I trusted him until that. Nah! But, uh... <laughs> He did hook me up with this sweet gun, and he hasn't tried to kill me in a bit, so that's nice. Um, <laughs> okay. So, uh, you go to get Vic. Um, engage. Um, the ship is under attack, uh, and now suddenly the the long con you've been playing about uh, <laughs> keeping this mutiny under your hat, proverbial uh, fedora, as though you were dibs, uh, has come to a head. Um, do you think now that you're actually free of Serpentos' attention, you would run and tell Brash, or what's your plan? Uh, you mean that he's going to that he's trying to mutiny us and steal yeah, you, all our hackers? Well, uh, you don't know about the hackers, but you I do don't know, know that he actively it. wants to murder Brash and steal his lightsaber and become, I guess, God King of your garbage ship. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do my fallback plan, which is what I always do. I'm going to hack the ship, baby. <laughs> I'm going to hack the ship. And, uh... <laughs> like your plague from the movie Hackers, you are going to hack the world. You know what? No, no, screw that. That's, that's lame. I, I got to change stuff up. This is the third that's act. Lame. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Johnny Lee Miller. I'm so sorry. Uh, so lame. <laughs> instead, I am going to... Uh, well I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow uh, Ultra Magnus because I'm going to tail him close because you got to keep your enemies close. And your, and that's, uh, and your that's brashes. The rule. That's the rule. Your enemies closer. <laughs> there you go. Got to keep your enemies close. End of, end of rule. <laughs> <laughs> Engage out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, I snap my, I, I click my legs together. I'm like, oh, there's something happening. There's some strangeness afoot, so I click my feet together and my little, uh, my little uh, wheels pop out, and I like <laughs> zoom down the hallways. It's very turbulent. There's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. At some point, about. you do a full on like roller derby along the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's to like, just check dibs out of the way. Exactly. Shake, shake. I don't even know who you are. Um, uh, and then I, I basically, I'm guessing. Um, Serpentos is trying to make their way onto that uh, small little ship. Well, Serpentos, you're after Vic at this point, right? Um, well, I I think I kind of changed my mind because you said he was a hacker, so it's yeah. like I just, I just telling oh, the hacker. To all right, yeah, yeah. So William J. Pantomane is going to go steal the ship so you can get on board with him. Yeah, I said I'll I'll meet you on the ship, so I'm heading towards the ship. Gotcha. All right, so um, engage. You're you're tracking um, uh, Serpentos through the ship. Uh, with your dope ass uh, roller skates, um, when all of a sudden um, a uh, Zabrak with uh, spectacularly blonde hair swept back over his little tiny horns uh, comes out with just like a perfect chicken cordon bleu, and you just knock that shit out of his hands, and he's just, oh well, that's just fucking perfect. Mies are so mad. Um, and then he just yells like, I'll get you, Duke boys, as you uh, ride and on down the as hall. As I'm riding down, I'm going like, do or do not, there is no fear, dude. And then <laughs> I, I give the devil sign. And he goes, I would be mad, but that's bloody brilliant. <laughs> Make it God sure. speed, you knight of tomorrow. Meanwhile, uh, a comm link on the ship clicks on. And uh, <laughs> Danny goes... Will do! Um, no one knows this. He hacked the ship to hear shirt ideas. So <laughs> somewhere in the galaxy, the shirt is being printed. Probably by... 
Ugnots? Let's say Ugnots. I feel like they would run a dope-ass print shop. Okay, so um, you catch up to uh, Serpentos as he, he stands dramatically uh, before the, um, the the docking bay clamp uh, to the Vic Viper. Oh, jeez. You look like some kind of robot that's a cop. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, I need you to go get Vic because he needs to unlock the ship. I have a plan to help save us. Oh, that's, that's good. Hey, you know what? Father and son's got to stick together, right? I agree. But in order for us to stick together, you need to go away temporarily to... <laughs> and then we can be together. Got it. Oh, by the way, son, wink. I wink to uh, somebody that's not there. Uh, uh, it's just William J. Lepetomane in the corner. <laughs> hey, your little robot hoof is untied. <laughs> uh, when my legs were built, laces were not included. And then I just hip check him. <laughs> so can I, can I hip check him? What, what's your intention? Just to stop him from boarding the Vic Viper? Yeah, I'm going to try to uh, uh, knock out one of his legs. I'll make it to the Vic Viper before him. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, so go <laughs> ahead and give me. Um, All right. Uh, We're going to get say, shot out of space. No one is on the guns. <laughs> Ron just... and athletics, please. Hold on. Let me. Do you have my sheet? I do. And I can tell you in advance, you have neither of those skills, but like, cool. Let's, <laughs> let's do some fucking murder ball shit. Um, so gotta, and he hack Serpentos' legs. <laughs> uh, no, he's, uh, yes, he's hack checking him. I'm oh, hack checking. There's like a fucking cable just out of his hip, like, oh. Um, yeah. Could so, I, yeah, could I actually hack his legs first? Uh, no, it's too late. Him? No, no, no. <laughs> was no, no, no. Why didn't I also. use my shitty brain? Um, all right, so you attempt to hip check him. Um, here's my question, guy. Do you want to try and make this look like the ship got hit and you're doing a full Star Trek stumble stumble and that's why you fell into him? That's... Or are you being blatant about just like, I'm going to hit him? No, no, no. It's, it's the first one. Okay, a Star Trek stumble stumble. It's the yeah. official name. Yeah, yeah. Great. So in that case, I need you to roll me a deception check, which is your cunning and your deception, which is... Three and... Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to stumble? <laughs> well, someone just came up with an episode name. Um, all right, so uh, you've got a three in deception. You have... No or sorry, you have a three in cunning. You have nothing in deception, but that means you have three green. Um, Adam, what is your intellect? Uh, well, my intellect increased when I got that upgrade. So my intellect is three. Three. So it's going to be three purple for you there, guy. Mm -hmm. um, do you, you have uh, available to you two destiny points? Would you like to use one to upgrade one of your greens to a yellow? Yes. <laughs> uh, as a dad, this matters a lot to you. Uh, I'm also going to give you two blue for William J. Pantomane's help. Wink. He's helping. What? <laughs> I will make your boots go faster. It's a reboot joke that's just for me. Yeah, no, I'm there. <laughs> All right, great. We are helping. Uh, we we are, are helping. helping. Thanks, bud. All right, uh, go ahead and roll there, guy. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Ooh, one success, two advantages. Aw, oh, man. All right, so you, you <laughs> hip check uh, Serpentos out of the way and leap uh, through the, the portal into the Vic Viper. As you do so, you just hear William J. Pantomine say, Oh, no! I'm um, sorry, there's a lot of distress and disturbance going on right now. I gotta go, bye! Uh, the doors slam, and the Vic Viper ejects off the uh, the side of the ship. Uh, meanwhile, um, <laughs> Brash, you're in the cockpit. Um, I need some piloting from you there, sir. Yeah, that uh, seems reasonable. So uh, I need space uh, piloting, which is agility. Yep. Cool. What's my difficulty? Um, 
One sec. Two. Cool. I've realized I'm, uh, my DMing style is so crippled by all the other games that uh, I need, just need to roll dice to set difficulty checks now. I need to see how good they're <laughs> succeeding so I can tell you how you succeed. Anyway, they rolled two successes, so go ahead. Great. Uh, I'm going to use a destiny point because we are not destined to get blowed up uh, on the way to the planet. Uh, Ryan, I'm also going to give you um, two setback dice, so the black dice, because uh, I rolled two advantage on my weird opposed check that I just made up. <laughs> okay. Let's get ready to fail, team. This battle looks, I will say Brash looks at this and is holding it together outward because he's used to that. But inside he's like, oh, this is, this is not good. I, I need the force and emperor. I don't want to, we, we're immortal, right? We're immortal. Reach we're immortal. out with your feelings. And Brash, um, you don't really have, I mean, you, you want to be immortal. That's one thing. But you're also dealing with a particularly horrific feeling which is blue balls. So I'm going to give you one blue dice for the rage you feel at Coitus Interruptus. Oh, yeah. Can you get All two right. blue dice, one for each ball? You know what, Tyler? Yeah, he does. <laughs> I got you, baby. I got your back. <laughs> what do we really know about this species? About Falling? Uh, I think we they have six blue balls. balls, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Ten. Listen, based on how horny the Shadows of the Empire novel was, if he had six balls, there would have been a full chapter describing them. Oh, okay. So, just two. Okay. All righty. Here we go. Hang on to your butts, uh, he says as he flies. Oh, Nix man. Nyx takes his hands off your butt and puts them on his own butt and then kind of looks confused. One success, one triumph, one threat. Very good, very good. All right. Pretty damn good. Um, so, okay, so um, you managed to dodge a lot of the laser fire. Um, the good news is that uh, you surprised, clearly surprised the, the local garrison who is in the midst of assaulting a moon. So like a weird ship dropping out of nowhere is kind of alarming. So they're kind of bad at it. Um, however, the threat is that you manage, so you manage to like shoot down with kind of the big gun, um, one of the headhunters, you kind of barrel roll like Slippy would tell you to through some things. The fire just blasts off you. You're good. However, you fly directly across the viewport of the Imperial capital ship. Now, it's not a Star Destroyer by any means. It's uh, a much smaller, much shittier Corvette. Um, and um, the sort of like essentially ringtone of hailing starts buzzing. Um, what uh, what shitty 8-bit thing is the ringtone on this particular ship? I think the and ringtone... did you change it? Because um, is this yours or is this the default? I feel like it originally, because we stole it and it was Imperial, it probably would have had its own, but I've had so long to fly this thing mm -hmm. that I think I've changed it. So I think it's one of those embarrassing things because... He would have liked it if he was alone in the cockpit and found this funny, but it's like a joke that he wouldn't have wanted to share. So it's just a, it's that weird, like when people have their ringtone be like a moan that's just like, oh. And he's like, oh, don't, don't, don't worry about that. That was funny for me. I'm sorry. Nick, you weren't supposed to be here. Um, I need you to roll me a deception check, please, sir. That's cunning and deception difficulty of. Ah, okay. Difficulty of one, but add uh, three setback dice, please. Those are the black dice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one purple, three black, and then whatever else you want to roll. Nix is, if this is happening in slow motion, this is Nix cocking an eyebrow at you, as you say, it definitely isn't yours. This is very um, much a penis pump thing from Austin Powers. One failure, two threat. Uh, he just shakes his head and says, Oh, brash. And there's a real... Like, if there could be a wah, 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 it would be here. And then I just say, shut up, you love me. Uh, and then I hit the button to accept the call. Uh, and you just hear him mutter, I really do. Um, and uh, from the other end, uh, you hear, this is Minor Moth Dewey. Who dares interfere with this imperial engagement? You can tell he doesn't have a British accent, but he's trying. 
And Brash just takes a deep breath and sighs and goes, my name is Renegade. <laughs> the Renegade? Definitely. If you're Renegade, surely you can tell me the catchphrase on my t-shirt. Uh, and then I just like hit mute and flip on the comms. I'm like, Vic, what's the Renegade catchphrase? Oh, wow, Renegade fever's really catching. <laughs> What's the catchphrase? I need to know, Apprentice. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just Renegade. It's All right, let me try that for a second. And then I put him on mute and I turn the other call back on and I'm like, Renegade. Hey, hang on, hang on. And you hear him like click some switches but clearly fail to mute you. And he says, Mom! Mom! It finally happened! Yeah, no, I'm talking to Renegade! No, that's right! No, he's definitely here. No, he's re Hang on, hang on. And you hear some more switches. He's like, this is Minor Moff Dewey. Can you repeat that, please, slightly louder, as though someone else might be listening and give me one second to press a switch? Okay, okay, hang on. No, he's going to do it. Okay, go. Now, now, Brash has realized he might have an in, so he's no longer reluctant. He's like, well, if there are any moms listening out there, let me say this. Renegade. Uh, you hear another ringtone of, come in. Oh, just just a second. I have another call. And then I mute that call. And then I, I'm like, Vic, this is going to be another minute. Uh, and then I like mute him again. And then I pick up the third call. Hello, dear. This is Charlene Dewey. I believe you're speaking to my son. Is this Renegade? Yes. Brash is no longer sure. Listen, I know this might be a little bit forward, but... Uh, I've been a fan of yours since I heard about you on the shopping network on Holodet <laughs> about an hour ago. Um, how do you feel about an over-the-comms liaison with an aged woman? Well, you know, normally I'd be really into that, but unfortunately your son's ships are all shooting at me, so I can't really... Oh, oh, well, allow me. And then you hear, like, another <laughs> flick. She's like... Dewey, you stop shooting at Mama's lay! And he goes, okay, <laughs> Mom. This is Minor Moff Dewey. You are clear for landing. <laughs> he clicks off, and the laser blasts stop. Meanwhile, uh, Engage, uh, you are in the Vic Viper. Uh, you have disconnected from the main ship. You've managed to keep your kind of, like, evil stepson uh, from uh, hijacking the ship, but there's just something bugging you. You know, it's it's just that that thing that, that William J. Lepanto Maine, a uh, beloved dumb scum and villainy character, said to you right before you got on board. It's just like this, this weird beeping and buzzing. It's just bugging the hell out of you. And then you realize that it isn't just what he said. It's the bomb that's strapped to the console. The bomb that explodes. Serpentos, you see your your valiant effort at at uh, like personal rebellion, really a chance to to really kind of uh, turn the tables in your favor, um, explode through a viewport uh you see the vic viper in all of its long time dumb scum and villainy glory uh, explode in a classic star wars fire in space explosion um and you turn to see william j lepantomane looking admittedly pretty nervous what do you do um so just to clarify do i have did i get that fork gun hand uh yeah so strictly speaking Yes, you said there's a fork gun, like, chain gun going on. It's just a chain gun with forks attached to it. it oh, but, it's not but, a fork gun. You have the fork gun. That's your arm. Oh, okay. So I have a fork gun. Is it transformable, yep. or I'm just walking around with a fork No, gun it, it's just, it's Furiosa style. It's just, like, you're currently Samus. It's just the cannon. Oh, sweet. Or, or like, uh, I mean, Mega Man can pop the hand, but it's just a cannon on your arm until you can hijack a droid. You're currently okay. a very lopsided, vaguely silly-looking fellow, which bugs Serpentos deeply. Right. Because okay. you're you're meant to be the perfect specimen, and now you have a stupid tiny arm and a big giant gun arm. But yeah, you have a fork gun with the fork on the end. What do you do? 
so I turn to the hacker and I and I'm like, uh, uh, very clever, uh, Willem Dafoe, whatever your name is, uh, and then I, uh, I, I I grab him by the neck and I kind of like push him against the wall, and uh, and I and I say uh, it was very brave, but very foolish. And to betray Serpentos Ultra Magnus is to court death itself. And then my hand turns into a fork gun and I fire. Cool. So um, his uh, head explodes and the rest of his body turns to ash. Um, as, uh, as the bolt hits him, he just says, It's Jayla Pantomain! And then he just turns to dust. <laughs> um, and you retract the fork from the wall and you try and transform your arm and it's just like whoosh, 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 and you're like, ah, no, it's still just a fork gun because I still haven't killed that droid for his arm yet. Um, <laughs> but I think I think Serpentos has uh, I kind of like this idea of him believing himself to be the perfect weapon that he refuses to acknowledge that his fork gun arm isn't a hand. Right. You start like <laughs> stroking your chin with the fork gun being like, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like bloody streaks <laughs> down your chin, and you're just like, yes, this is fine! Just um, scratching his helmet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's he blows up, and then um, uh, I kind of tap my, my comm link in my new uh, awesome Galvatron <laughs> helmet. <laughs> yeah, with, well, so that my other hand's like a... It's, it has, so it's a, so it's you a have sweep, a... Sweep, sweep, claw. So it's sweep, claw, sweep's okay. arms are like literally... If you, if you were a child drawing a stick figure of a robot, it's a, like right. a, a thin arm, so it's like two tubes with like a little joint in the middle, and then a fucking Lego hand, like a okay. metal Lego hand, and then your other arm is a badass steampunk Furiosa fork gun. Right. But, uh, so that one's a full like shoulder. You got like a full bicep, and then a full forearm, and then a fork gun. The other one is just and to be clear, it's a Lego arm, but it does it does grab. So okay. it's not like it's just stuck for you to put, like, Lego or, shit or in From just elbow forward, place. it's just that grabber you give the elderly to pick things off of the floor. Yeah. And, and like incidentally, when you were that. describing killing William, I kind of imagined you had, like, your weird baby arm. <laughs> uh, but I liked that it was the fork gun arm. Um, but, uh, yes, so one of your arms is kind of small and silly. The other one is big and scary, but also not an arm. Okay, so I'll, I'll take my small and silly arm, and I'll, I'll tap uh, the uh, intercom in my helmet, and I'll, uh, in a private channel I have with uh, Shatterstar, and uh, I'll be like, uh, it looks like we have a betrayer in our midst. Employ operation, kill the hackers. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, then that, our plan is that Shatterstar takes her awesome Gatling gun and then takes out all the hackers in the hacker room. So... She taps the comm link three feet away from you and says, Roger? Uh, and then just, like, looks you in the helmet and just kind of, like, backs away and, like, checks back in. And then, like, okay. It's Serpentos, not Roger. <laughs> she looks at her hand. She goes, need to update that. She crosses out Roger. And Roger. <laughs> Good. That's okay. Uh, Waka was written above that. Um, all right. So off she goes. Um... Vic, um, out of the sort of viewport of your lounge, you see a ship that looks exactly like the Vip, Vic Viper explode. Oh, huh. ship looks like the Vic Viper. Anyway. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, uh, the ship is uh, no longer under attack. It seems to have, have uh, settled into a more regular pattern. Um as though you're on an airplane, you can feel it descending towards a planet. I'm gonna go into the walk into the cockpit and talk to Brash. All right. Um, so Brash, um, do you have a... sex phone yeah. sex with Dewey's mom? Yes, I do. I have okay. lurid, obscene, disgusting sex. And because the cockpit doesn't have a door, I gesture Nyx over to prevent people from coming in to interrupt my sex scene if he can. Yeah, so Nyx was trying to do that when Vic approaches, but he's also backseat driving your like dirty phone talk. Like he just keeps chiming in with like suggestions and it's it's honestly it's annoying because he's right, but like you're kind of trying to create a vibe here. Um, so needless to say, he is unfortunately in the middle of, of describing like, well, no, but if her leg is there, then you can't possibly get it. And then Vic pushes past him, uh, into the, um, the cockpit. Um, Vic, do you acknowledge, 
uh, Nix at all, or is he just like a weird door to you? No, I acknowledge him enough that he's part of my crew. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say, Nix, good to see you up and about. Uh, what's the situation here, uh, Brash? Okay, we, first of all, my name is landing? Darth Jedi. I've got the, the call on mute. First of all, my name is Darth Jedi, and you have to when refer to me as Master. Why did you, I, when did your name become Darth Jedi? I picked that like 10 minutes ago. Okay, do you know what? Okay, really, well, that I is sort of rude. I don't have to respect that decision. You're, you're <laughs> brash. brash. Wait, what, what, what do I do after stroking the side of my face? I'm just going to need you, just, just to say, I have to bring a woman to orgasm or we all die. Okay, uh, and I just go back and describe like Man. what I do to her for like 10 uh, seconds. And it is pornographic. And then I just flick it back to mute and I'm like, she's going to be good for a minute. Oh, do boy, you have a I question? Have <laughs> Yeah, uh, what happened? They stopped shooting at us. Are we cleared to land and finish our deal with Tutu Cups? Correct, as long as I can get this, uh, this older woman to have an orgasm thinking she's making love with Renegade, then we can what? land, no problem. What's wrong with the real deal? How come I'm not having f gross phone sex with this lady? Because you're an apprentice in, in the matters of the bedroom and I run a hand down his cheek, I just say, I am I the master. <laughs> Just like, hey, quit it. <laughs> Personal space. I, I mean... Renegade, darling, are you still there? Yes, of course I yes, am. And I am, did just did course, the, the, yes. The, and then I just like, I just hit him. <laughs> just like lightly, Ow. but I just like hit Ow. him in the Ow. arm. And Gosh. I put it back on mute. You dick. <laughs> Listen, only one of us can make her go all the way. And I don't think it's you. I don't think it's you. All right, do you know what? Let's, Nix. I think we can agree as an impassioned sidebar. We both have to think of the next thing we would tell her that we're going to do to her, and he'll tell us who thinks it's the sexiest. That Renegade would say, I think. Okay, sure, you're going to lose, but go ahead. All right. Okay, All right. You uh, I need you both to roll for this, because as much as I love improv, uh, <laughs> you don't dice mechanics. Yeah, you don't uh, <laughs> I do, but Dewey's mom needs to know what the dice roll is. Uh, so well, we're both going to say them to Nix, and then he'll approve who the winner is. Or just, yeah, or, I yeah. want you to roll. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, I want you to roll, and that then you sense. can improv based on how well you roll or how poorly. <laughs> this like isn't for me. This is for you. All right, I hope yeah, I let's roll go for poorly because I don't know what good dirty talk sounds like. We run a podcast network. <laughs> None of us know what good dirty talk sounds like. I, 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 I was yeah. going to say, Adam knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, uh, I, you can just tell me what skills you think you would use. <laughs> I really want someone to say astrogation, but I don't think either of you have it. No. Well, if it's planetary, then yes. Um <laughs> Probably just charm. I feel like he'd lean into the charm. Yeah, all right. His whole thing. Uh, how about you, Renegade? I think because other Renegade. I think because Vic walked in on the conversation. You know, he's coming in cold, and he doesn't <laughs> know the uh, he doesn't know the physiology of the woman on the other line. <laughs> so, <laughs> doesn't know like how many like hands she has or anything like that, or like how many eyes she has or anything. So we're gonna go with. Um, I want to say like this. No, I was gonna say deception. Um, let's uh, go, uh, I, I would buy deception, not in that you're trying to deceive her about your intent, because uh, that would be horrible. But you're you're just like giving platitudes, be like, put the thing next to the thing that feels good. Yes, <laughs> like I would buy that. The deception isn't that you're trying to lie to her about what she should yeah. do, just that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'd buy that deception. You know, I'm gonna go for another negotiation. That's All what right. I'm <laughs> Great. <laughs> I went great for Vic last time. So that's a total of two green dice for Vic. Yep. Feeling good. Brash, what's your... Uh... I've got one green and two yellow. Okay, so Adam and Guy, I need your help with this. Um, no. Ooh, okay, this is a... It's a difficulty of four, based on my roll. Um, so... Either of you can add boost dice or setback dice to these two characters. Why do you think Brash or Vic would be better or worse at this incredibly strange task? I think I think Vic would be better at it 
because he's the OG. <laughs> he uh, knows the renegade lingo. He knows the lingo. That said, I mean, Brash has her in his hand right now, in his palm. And palms, what do they do? They massage genitals. <laughs> um, yeah. but so you want to say one, one blue to each? No, it's over the phone. I got to give it to the OG. I'm yeah, giving yeah, it that's a kick. Also, admittedly, Brash is, is an in-person uh, seductor. This is difficult without the pheromones. Um, Adam, how about you? Who gets the uh, who gets the nod from you? Uh, you know, you know what? I I, I agree. I think uh, Guy put it uh, put it pretty uh, pretty plainly there. So I uh, I say Brash gets the uh, the bad and Vic gets the good. All right. This concludes our weird Sunday night football armchair <laughs> coaching. So that's two blue to um, Vic to bl setback black dice to Brash. Uh, Brash, I'm going to give you an additional blue because you've been at this for a bit. Um, I feel like you should have a ruling on this, Tom. Vic is not trying to win over the woman on the phone. He's trying to beat Brash. Like, that's <laughs> like where he's coming that's from. A, that's a very good point, Tyler. Yeah. Um, hmm. I would argue... That that is the true essence of Renegade, though. <laughs> Weirdly. So I'm going to give you a setback dice. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I'm also going to upgrade one of your greens to a yellow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because Vic, you're all like... Because it isn't about done. her, but it yeah. is about Brash. But weirdly, the Renegade persona is about proving someone wrong. Uh, and then Brash, I'm going to give you one more blue because you realize this is life or death. Or actually, no, right. sorry. Upgrade a green to a yellow because you understand this is life or death. Whereas I think Vic is just <laughs> wants oh. to win. Yeah, it's pride for Vic. Yeah, he doesn't know that this is. Yeah, all right. All right. So I guess on. that's that's the this spread. Lady. All right. The spread. Nice. I didn't mean it, but uh. Uh, nice. also, you guys are out of uh, dusty yeah, points. So dusty, I'll yeah. start burning those the second you guys make me do something that actually matters to the plot. <laughs> yeah, let's nice. see how hard this lady orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to roll for that. You're both talented. Go. What did you get, Tyler? To, I would love to hear Ryan's. <laughs> <laughs> One advantage. Two threat. <laughs> Wait, so you're a threat to... I, okay, I, all right, all right. Okay, so here's, here's what happens. Um, so um, Vic starts just... Like uh, it's a little bit like a like a Beastie Boys song uh, in that um, Brash is saying things and then Vic is just saying the last line of it slightly <laughs> louder a half beat after. So um, Brash, you're giving like tremendously good advice. Um, I will say that you're uh, like it is. This is just like ordering a pizza for you. Like it's just very much like. Okay, no, no, like to the left. Okay, yeah, there you go. Okay, so what I'm going to need you to do next is this. Um, but again, you're a master of this. Um, and again, Nix has been backseat driving, but like hasn't been the worst. It's been good advice. Um, so Vic, you continue to just try and jump on the end of this. And this is the first time I think that you have ever realized someone else might be a good renegade. And that's a fucking bummer. Um... So you just redouble your efforts, and you just keep yelling the last line louder. And um, when uh, Dewey's mom has, you know, finished off, she's had a, a grand old time, you hear uh, the awkward clearing of a throat. And um, minor moth Dewey says, <clears throat> Okay, mom, thanks. Um, <laughs> What's his mom? So, Renegade, uh, I didn't much care for the aggressive way you kept repeating yourself. My mom isn't stupid. She's a very smart lady. So I'm going to need you to die. <laughs> um, and with your two threat, you see the weapon systems gearing back up. Uh, you have a split second to react. Uh, Vic and Brash, only you guys are in the cockpit. What do you do? Quick, Brash, seduce him. 
Like you did his mother, like mother, like son, do it. Do whatever you did, do it. And I just, I, I flip it on and I'm like, listen, Dewey, I did what she wanted, but renegades got even better for the real heroes out there. You Imperial boys in black. Um, I'm a minor moth, so they, they give me off yellow. Even better. You were mean to my mommy! And he just starts firing. Um, meanwhile, uh, Engage, you exploded. <laughs> the, uh, the ship around you uh, detonated, and um, for, for just a split second, you thought you were done. What was the final thought that ran through your head before the, the ship exploded? Honestly, uh, I was just thinking, like, what are the lyrics to the <laughs> to the intro for Step by Step? Step by Step. And then the ship explodes before we get charged by SoCan. Um, so yeah, there, there's already owns our show. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a, a tremendous explosion, and uh, it's a classic Star Wars like. If we're looking at it, we're outside the cockpit, and you're looking at it. And then it just explodes on you. Um, but you're a robot. So uh, it still damages you. Uh, you're going to take uh, five points of uh, damage. So your soak, I believe, is two. I will check your sheet for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> in, I forgot to bring Tom that Town. sheet up. No, It's all good, brother. Um <laughs> Honestly, at the rate we've been talking rather than rolling, that's entirely understandable. Yeah, your soak value is two. So you have a, a wound total of 12. Uh, so you're going to take three points of damage to that. Uh, so you're going to drop down to nine. Um, you have he's a pretty sturdy. He is very sturdy. He is a yeah. robot. He's, he's a robot. Um, now, Guy, you also have a... There's a value called strain that we have literally never talked about on the show before um, that is basically your mental fortitude. Um, you have a strain of 11. Uh, you're going to take six points of strain damage because I'm going to ask you, in a classic Dum Dums and Dragons uh, stress way, what in the tickle trunk did you find that helps you get planet side? You're not returning to the ship. You are, you are dropping from orbit. But what helps you get planet side that you found in the rick dunbar tickle trunk right um so i found this very eclectic uh feather boa he has so many of those <laughs> yeah and basically i use it to attach it to the one boa after another after another after another and so i weave it together quickly uh because i'm a robot i can do that mm -hmm. into like <laughs> one big feather boa parachute that can you know withstand re-entry so and as as you see um, the wee baby Seamus like dodging fire and hit, having its engine hit and starting to plummet through the atmosphere, you you you're just you know constricting boas faster and faster yeah. like some kind of boa constrictor step type by step. Uh, and then you make a great parachute, but you're still just floating in space because that's how physics works. Right. Um, <laughs> Right. But then you remember the classic Hollow Knight character Tails from Space, Sonic, <laughs> and Tails. And you take the parachute behind you and you start to spin. And you just spin. And you're spinning and spinning and spinning. And because I almost failed science in high school, this creates propulsion for you that starts pushing you towards the atmosphere. Um, and you realize once you break through, you'll be able to parachute. But in the meantime, you're just just going to fall from the sky. Uh, you built it to step by step. What is your plummeting from the sky song? I'm so high, I can see forever. Oh you sing God. in reverse as you fall. I'm uh, so high, I can see forever. Oh, not never, no, not ever, something, something. You know, they say that a hero will save us. Engage is not going to wait anymore. Uh, and he begins to parachute from atmosphere. Shh, 
scientists. You're listening to the wrong podcast. Go <laughs> find Neil deGrasse anymore. Tyson. <laughs> we don't have. I'm sorry, Alex like Kerr this. specifically. All right. Um. So, uh, the ship is going down. Um. Good news is that Brash, you were able to dodge through. Uh, the fire, um, and the good news is that uh, because of the amount of distractions you made, the rest of the fleet is not paying attention to you. Fleet is a strong term, but you know what I mean. Um, so you're basically riding down through the atmosphere, um, and uh, you've got a um, a sensor ping from Tutu Cups's compound. Now, previously you'd met him, kind of in like a like almost a mine sort of situation. Um, but it would seem that he's retreated to his mansion. So that is where you are headed. Um, the ship is, uh, to quote my, my old pal Buzz Lightyear, falling with style. Um, is there anything you think you would do on the way down? Uh, I mean, Obviously, like you're going to try and like prevent from yeah, crashing and everything else. Good. Uh, strap myself in. Make sure Nix gets strapped in, in the cockpit. Tell Vic to strap himself in, but... Prioritize Nick's no, third seat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Serpentos, mm-hmm. um, you are uh, standing in a room full of dead hackers. Excellent. Um, uh, Shatterstar is, is sitting there with a real grim, dark expression on her face. Um, and uh, she looks a little bit like Grumpy Cat. Uh, it's hard for Twi'leks to look really furious, but like she's trying. Um, and uh, pfft, the Ewok is is reaching up with his tiny furry hand and grasping at, at your, your pant leg, and he's just like, Yup, yup, yip chop! <laughs> uh, and I look down, and uh, to quote Mr. Megatron himself, my hand turns into a gun and I go, such heroic nonsense. And then I, and I blast him. <laughs> you, you, you traumatize a generation of 80s children, myself included. Don't worry, Rodimus will be here soon. Uh. Um, so you blast uh, the Ewok's head apart. And um, at the far end of the room, um, just like, riddled with bullets, none of which are from a fork gun, uh, but a f- couple of forks uh, sticking out of him. Um, DeLorean just looks up at you and he says, you think you've won? Yes, I have. I'm going to create a web of lies and I'm going to succeed because of that. It's my plan. So, you Okay, die. yep, it sounds like you've got it figured out. Okay. <laughs> Uh, shit, I was really hoping my last words would deter you, <laughs> and then he dies. Good, now they're all dead. <laughs> uh, Shatterstar, you go to the garage and uh, pretend to read a book or something. You weren't here. I'm going to go to the cockpit, <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to go blame all this on Engage, who's dead. She says, finally, a chance to finish... Eat, pray, love. And then yes. She throws the chain gun over her shoulder, which is really a lot more awkward than she'd hoped. And then, like, she can't quite get through the door, and it's a whole, it's just a whole routine. Um, and uh, you you storm back towards uh, the cockpit, markedly ignoring the Gronk droid in the corner. <laughs> The manor house of two two cups is just like the one from Scarface, but if it was Star Wars. So imagine it's on a green screen or something. I don't know. Maybe there's weird aliens hanging out outside. Sure, why not? But the important thing is, it is a fucking luxury mansion. Um, the grounds are drastically different from what you've seen previously, whereas before you'd met him in really kind of uh, mercenary circumstance now you see the way that two two cups lives and what the syndicate has provided for him it's a massive mansion on sprawling grounds those weird tall spiky trees that only exist in rich people's houses um line a long pool stretches out across the grounds behind his house the mansion itself um has a beautiful facade uh second floor balcony whole nine yards however it is under siege 
and you can see very poorly equipped stormtroopers. And I'm talking like they all have like bits and pieces of stormtrooper. There's no one stormtrooper amongst them. It's like one suit of armor got like loaned out amongst several people. Uh, along with a bunch of kind of motley pirates, most of whom, um, you know, a quick scan can tell you have blue eyes. So clearly Agrippa is is part of this assault, um, are laying siege to the mansion. So there's a bunch of like um, land speeders lined up along the perimeter, people behind the land speeders exchanging uh, fire with um, cup syndicate members. Um, Brash, uh you are, again, falling with style, but you've had enough piloting experience to know that you can put this thing down somewhere near these grounds. As you can see it, there are troops at the far end of this long pool, um, but they're kind of, like, moving in through the trees like a weird shitty SWAT team. The rest of them are around the front, uh, and it's a full-on, like, blaster fire assault. Um, do you want to use the chaos of the siege to try and infiltrate from the front or are you going to risk crashing the back stealthing up amidst presumably a slightly stealthier and possibly more equipped team um knowing i've got serpentos on board who i don't trust to not try to kill us all i need to distract him with someone else to kill so i would like to go in through the front and then maybe bluff and claim i'm here to help as a hero so if we can, I'd like to hit some troops and just slide forward to stop <laughs> the front of the house. Wait, so you're trying to show up as, um, I'm sorry, in my head I thought you were going to try and tell the cop, like you are going to do the weird like, here's my wallet, I'm an FBI agent. You no. mean you want to kill as many of the people assaulting the mansion as possible and then claim that you're on Tutu Cups' side? Correct. Cool. Um, Vic. Uh, you strapped yourself in, and you're staring at a weird console that says co-pilot. And it's weird, because it's, like, at the back, and you don't really know what that means, but there seems to be a trajectory map that shows that you're going to, like, land in front of a place. Um, you've had to park a car near a party before. Where do you think the, the, the car should get parked? Uh, right up at the, the front door, right up in the driveway, up at the front. So you confirm the the parking plan. Yeah. Uh, we're good. Um, Serpentos, you storm into the cockpit, and um, you have a story just ready to go about the, yeah. the betrayal of Engage. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking at the viewport, you can see a, a massive mansion, the kind that you yourself had always hoped to own. Truly a drug kingpin's mansion under siege, and it seems that you're coming in for an assault. Uh, what do you think Serpentos does when he sees all of this happening? Um, so I don't tell my lie. I have to... Uh... No, you can. I'm just curious because oh, okay. I, I feel like... Uh, what I like to imagine is that you stormed in uh, full of piss and vinegar, ready to just like kick ass and take names. Right. And it's the kind of thing where like you've been constructing this whole narrative about what's been going on, and then you walk in and everyone's distracted by an entirely different situation. So I guess my question is, do you tell them the lie? Or... Uh... What do you do? I, I, I walk in and I'm like, oh, oh no, oh, no. And uh, then uh, I'm like, oh, wow, that's <laughs> what a great house. That's a house that I always wanted to own. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, uh, you know all those hackers that we had? Well, I have bad news, everybody. What do you mean? We're crashing in five. I'm really going to need you to sit down. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vic, this is also the kind of mansion you always wanted. Are you going to just let Serpentos have this cool mansion? Um, I feel like this is like a mansion that I like used to have kind of thing. <laughs> uh, this was your training mansion? Yeah. Uh, I mean... I guess it's nice. He can, <laughs> it's a bit of a fixer upper if you ask me. Um, but uh, if he wants it, um, he's welcome to it as long as we rescue my parents. Which uh, I will point out are happen, not in this particular match. Yeah, yeah. If that doesn't happen, then uh, this match would be a nice consolation. For, for Vic. Cool. Serpentos, I assume you're strapping in, not not paying much attention to anything else now that you realize that it's a crash I, landing. I brace. 
I brace heavily. Um, uh, this is literally the time to brace. <laughs> yeah, I'm bracing, and then I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> anyway. Oh, you're just saying. trying to get through this story? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm like, because it's like, oh, they're all dead. I don't want to get blamed for it. I like this a uh, lot. Yeah, so it's like, also very on brand for how you've pitched Serpentos. Like, he's not good at this. This is just what he does. <laughs> so I'm like strapping and be like, so all those hackers that we meant to uh, trade, well, the treacherous Engage destroyed them all. Then he tried to get on the Vic Viper, but I listen. I, I can tell you, you've worked out this whole thing you're going to say, but I, I really need to crash this in a way that won't kill us all. But wait, I, I'm <laughs> trying to meditate. I can't deal with you and the Emperor at the same time. Uh, <laughs> fuck! 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 It's me, the Emperor. Fuck! Uh, go ahead, roll a piloting check, please. <laughs> I'm going to give you two setback dice for the Emperor and Serpentos being tremendous pricks during this. It's going to be like, the Emperor's dead, you idiot. That was, that was Minor Moff Dewey you were talking to. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's very good. Yeah, that's entirely good. Two successes, one advantage. Incredibly wow. unlikely. Success through <laughs> adversity. Cool, 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 cool. Um, all right, so um, Brash, uh, ignoring all of the, the voices in your head, you reach out with your feelings. And your feelings in this particular instance, uh, honestly, based on everyone aboard, really relates at this point just to Nyx. And you realize that Nyx is an incredibly fragile thing. He's just a, a mortal being with no additional powers. And, you know, earlier in your life as a Falleen, that might have seemed kind of silly because there were so many power structures at work. But now you actually feel a, a weird duty to protect your squishy, squishy lover. And so at the last minute, you actually just crank uh, the, the ship to the side um, in a way that if we're talking like auto collisions will hurt you more than him. Um, so, um, Brash, uh, I'm going to say that's, um, four wounds to you. Okay. Vic, that's four wounds to you. Uh, Serpentos, you braced. So that's two wounds to you. Oh, sweet. Am I back up at 12? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because you, you've had time to become a weird robot, right. man. So, yeah, you're, okay. you're in good shape now. I have limbs again. All right. Yeah. Uh, and I believe your soak value means that you just don't take any of that. Uh, so, you've got oh. soak of four, so you just don't Oh, I care. braced. Yeah. Uh, well, and also, you braced and you have armor. So, you're just like, yeah, all right, that was uncomfortable. Like, Whereas the two yeah. guys wearing silk are just like, ow, fuck, ow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that... Um, looking through the viewport as all the alarms are blaring in your ears, you just see a bunch of half-dressed Imperial troops uh, and a bunch of one blue-eyed troopers look up at you, and there's just uh, one guy probably played by, like, Eric Idle, who's just like, oh, fuck, and then you just plow into them, destroying land speeders, breaking hearts, taking names killing people <laughs> um <laughs> meanwhile um there is a new star in the sky as a very damaged robot falls through the atmosphere um as you break out of the atmosphere having finished singing hero three times and realizing that you know some of the lyrics but incidentally the ones that indicate to your pals that you know it you open your uh, Bender-style chest chassis, and rather than finding Waka inside, which now you always hope you will, you pull out a boa-based parachute that you've stowed in there to prevent it from burning up, um, and you, you throw it dramatically above you, Engage, and you begin to drift down. Um, almost uh, un heralded a song begins to play in your head a song that you told us about on break when we were off mic what is your <laughs> drifting down to earth song 
Well, uh, it's a song that speaks to my my name. It's uh, the song of Down by the band 311. Uh, fuck, this is hard. Uh, it's just mostly rap, the lyrics. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have okay, to. Okay, here it goes. I'm just going to do the I'm just going to do the chorus. We've changed a lot and then some, some. You know that we have always been down, down. Ever, ever didn't thank you, you. Then just <laughs> let me do it now. Keep my feet on the ground. Keep my head in the clouds. And just at that point, my boat breaks. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, I better hit myself into those spiky trees that only rich people have. That will stop me from hurting myself more. Uh, <laughs> guy, can you, give me, can you give me a proper falling guy yell? Yo! <laughs> and then he hits the rich people trees. Um, they don't have good, uh, like they're not good for falling into. They just they don't have nice give. Yeah, as topiaries. Oh, um, would they bend? Would they bend? Like kind of like. Uh, and then throw him into the <laughs> distance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but there's there's another one near him, so it's a sideshow Bob on a rake situation, but it's between two rich people trees. So it's like, and that just happens all the way down because it's you know Star Wars and sci-fi. They are forty foot tall trees, so that just happens for like a good five minutes. Um, Take another four points of uh, wounds. You have, I believe, soak of two, so you'll take two wounds from uh, sideshow bobbing slash goofy movieing your way down two trees. So that I'm at seven health now. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, you say that like I'm tracking what the party's health is. <laughs> I got it. I got it up here in the old. Lockbox. I got. It. I wrote it down. I, uh, that's cool. I'm just saying. I, I don't care. <laughs> but cool. <laughs> Great. Good, uh, but also death. Um, so he's lost five of twelve. He actually has seven. It, it, that's I s still will just throw rancors at you all until you die. Uh, so um, engage. You struggle uh, out of um, like a shrubbery that is also like meticulously manicured at the bottom of the rich people trees, um, and you kind of uh, dust yourself off. Uh, and your art, like your your chassis, is still like red hot from falling through the atmosphere. Um, the bows have burned away, huh. but you still owe your boy some revenge. Um, and uh, in the distance, you can see majestically the wee baby Seamus just fucking crash and plow through a bunch of things. And then you hear a bunch of yells of like. They're over there! Get them! And you see a bunch of guys starting to run towards it uh, with their guns up. What do you do? Well, I'm glad that uh, uh, retribution, uh, revenge might be, uh, you know... Revengeance? Revengeance might be thrown towards my newfound adversary of Serpentos. But on the other hand, I look at this wonderful tree that... These, these wonderful trees that have saved my life. And I realized, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? Organic life, it's pretty rad. <laughs> I care and about these goofballs. R uh, rollerblade feet, it's a go-go gadget time. I'm, I'm now full-on hero bot. I'm making my way over there. All right. Um, the ship has crashed. Uh, luckily, all of you were were roughly tied in. Um, Serpentos, you braced, so you're actually the first one to be able to react. Um, and basically, you see like lightly armored Imperial troops like rushing towards the um, the ship. Um, and just beyond that, a fucking sick mansion. And you remember being stuck inside Waka's brain, while all he wanted was an axe, and you could see how much more there was. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Um, so I kind of like, uh, uh, I like rub my hands together by my, my claw head and my fork <laughs> on <laughs> head. It's, like, <laughs> it's just like, hmm, I'm coming up with a plan. I no longer have an inner monologue. It's all just like that. <laughs> well, admittedly, if you were trapped in Waka's head this whole time, your inner monologue was just you like in a weird brain space. Yeah. Now that you're out, you're just saying it because you've never had a mouth. 
it's yeah it's like with like you know like old comics whenever like the bad guy is just in a room, oh 100 yeah, yeah, yeah monologuing yeah it's just like no but also legitimately if you're just trapped in someone's head you would just say it out loud because you don't know yeah. any better yes excellent but in order to get the house i must stop the people preventing me from getting the house hmm. they better not know my plan i'm gonna go to the guns and i'm gonna shoot the people coming at me and then uh, i i run to the ship guns and I, I plug myself in, and, All I, right. uh, and I want to take him out. Go ahead and roll me a gunnery check, please, with agility. And you get a boost dice for your helmet. Oh, yeah. Um, we are still out of uh, destiny points, because I haven't got to roll any dice yet. Uh, so, fuck it. Uh, I'm going to upgrade this one, I guess. Um, so, I'm going to say difficulty... Oh, well, it depends. Um, Adam, what do you want to do? Do you want to try and kill all of them, some of them, or the scariest ones? Um, I'll, I'll probably pick them off like as they get closest. Okay, so, so let's so, yeah. we'll go for a mid a mid challenge then. So uh, I'm gonna say it's three purple. I'm gonna upgrade one to a red. So that's two purple, one red, uh, plus your gunnery and agility which is my agility is two my gunnery is one so that's one yellow one green plus a blue for your helmet okay i'm also gonna give you a blue for greed you want this fucking house oh yeah um and i'm gonna give you one setback so one black in that it's very hard to shoot people on the ground with like a starship laser. This is but like firing I... anti-aircraft gun at people. Okay. Do, does my previous bracing help at all? From uh... it does not. It is giving you this full round of spotlight, though. <laughs> oh, okay. All well, right. the other okay. two are dealing with getting in a car accident and making sure their shoulders are still attached. Right. Okay. So I got uh, green, yellow, two purple, uh, red, two blue. And I'll give you one more blue for Shatterstar, who's now up on top firing the chain gun at oh, these, she's there too. At these oh. clowns. Yep. Yeah. All right. Roll dice. Oh, my goodness gracious. It's one success, one triumph. All right. That's nice. I did it. <laughs> uh, legitimately, yes, you did. Yeah. Uh, so you start blasting, like, it, it's a, a classic zombie game thing where you're just like, well, when they get close, to, it's the Resident Evil 4 approach or the Last of Us approach. I'll just wait until one gets close. Then be like, pow, pow. Um, so you're blasting them, um, and Shatterstar is just kind of giving covering fire. Uh, for the Triumph, I'm going to say that you can activate one of your allies. So does Engage arrive? Does Brash wake up or does Vic wake up? Um, you know what? While I'm gunning, I uh, uh, because Engage he fell through the atmosphere, mm -hmm. so he's red hot and he's in a forest, so things are probably on fire. So I I, I, I kind of turn and I see like why is there a forest fire? And I just see this like like red hot Engage, yeah, like. No. <laughs> Terminator coming da, 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 da. <laughs> Nothing but thumbs up all the time. <laughs> um, and I'm like, first I'm like, oh no, like he's, he's alive, my lie. Um, <laughs> that everyone listened to. My clever yeah. ruse. And I, and I say this out loud, it's like, oh no, my lie. My clever ruse. <laughs> um, and so I'm kind of hoping he'll die in the crossfire, but if he gets in range, I'm going to try to take him out. Okay, very cool. Engage, uh, you now, as in, in, imbued by all of us, terminator your way out of a forest fire, which implies that the tree that saved you was on fire, and you're like, <laughs> I care for these, and then just <laughs> skated away, setting the rest of them on fire. You're like, yes, friends, yeah. burn for me! I speak um, for the trees! <laughs> yeah, you're just like a weird mix of uh, the Phantom of the Opera and the Lorax. You just skate your way out of there. Um, oh, fuck. This is a really interesting question. So, um, Adam has both activated you and threatened you. So... You know what? Okay, I don't think you would be thinking about... Um, Serpentos, as you tried to save your buds. 
I think you'd just be trying to save your buds. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a full attack round. But if you roll any threat, I'm going to let Adam shoot you. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, um, luck. Guy, what do you think your attack is as you come in? So there's stuff on fire. I'm blazing a trail behind me. I'm creating a lot of smoke. And you're also a robot who's good at hacking. So there are a bunch of land speeders around that have gear on them. Like there are guns on all these these speeders. You can try and hack them to have them shoot their own guys. You can try and rehack the wee baby Seamus to activate that big old arm gun. Or you can just try and set everyone on fire by like ice dancing your way through. Tell you what. <laughs> I want to do two things. All right. Actually, I want to be doing three things on the fly. All One, three things you mentioned. <laughs> no. I, I'd like to hack the big gun. I would also like to make them shoot themselves. Well, because, no, 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 no. Because, I wish there were dice that could help me <laughs> stop this, but there aren't. So as I'm going forward, I realize I'm creating a lot of smoke, but I create a, a, a weird pattern. Like I start zigzagging so that I can create, like as I light things instantaneously as I touch them, I give myself smoke cover so he can't see what I'm doing. All right. While that's going on, I do hack <laughs> using my big old brain the uh, the the arm of the Seamus, which is behind him. All right. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm also <laughs> connecting a boa. It, no, another yes. one. <laughs> no, the same boa. Oh, okay. So while I'm doing the zigzag, it, I'm I'm it, attaching it to the stumps to it make it up. <laughs> it burns no. up like a cat's cradle of this boa. Is, this is amazing. Tom's like, you can do A, B, or C. You're like, I would like to do B, but also E and F. <laughs> no, no, no. Just g give me a couple more minutes with yeah. this. Trust me, nothing bad will come of it. But go yeah. on. Uh, and um, I I want him to. And so I'm I've created a boa. Uh, yeah, a cat's cradle, you know, base. <laughs> and a silver spoon, a little boy blue, and the, and the man in the moon. I get you, yeah. And, Adam, get uh, those attack dice ready. <laughs> we'll be together <laughs> then, son. Ult ultimately, right. here's I don't want I I don't want to blow my plan here because there actually is a plan. <laughs> okay, but I want him to think that I'm 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 hacking the uh, the arm because I am sort of somewhat right. Mm -hmm. So while there's all this distraction in front of him, there's now a newfound distraction behind him, which leaves this baby wide open for my ultimate attack. But wait, sorry, when you say this baby, which baby are you trying to kill? I really need a baby killing. I'm talking about Serpentos, baby. Okay, so you don't even care about all these people trying to kill your friends. You're just after Serpentos. I'm just after Serpentos now. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I'm... I'm I'm like, I, I'm so not used to caring about organic life that I'm willing to sacrifice them for my revenge. I love organic life. I will protect everything. I sacrifice everyone to care. Admittedly, we did say his revelation of this came at the result of burning a forest to the ground. So yeah, this kind of tracks. Life's never looked more alive than when it's dying. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh... I'm in too deep now. I can't go back and make a smarter decision. <laughs> Appreciate that. That might as well be the tagline of this entire series. Yeah. All right. So, Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, guy, I need you to roll me a computer's check to begin with. Of the of the eight actions you've presented to me, uh, take that one first. So, computers and intelligence. I need three purple. I'm going to spend a destiny point to turn one of them red. You now have two destiny points, not for this, but for other things. Hold on a second. Three That's points. good. They'll be ready for Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Adam has never spent a destiny. Oh. No, no. I'm very he doesn't believe in it. Like that. Hang on, I'm, I'm just going to get uh, get Guy's sheet ready for ripping. Just give me a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, two purple, one red. Uh, whatever your computers and intelligence are. I uh, going to need you to tell them that. Yeah, I know. I, that's why I'm looking. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, it's all good. So uh, that's a four and a one. So that's uh, one yellow, three green. Because I didn't properly look at the rules when I made your character. Um, and is there any blue because of the distractions? Yeah. 
Yes, but it's going to cost you one strain. If you run out of strain or wounds, you die. Oh, damn. <laughs> so, congratulations. You're one blue dice that can at best get you maybe a success or, a tr or an advantage. Does that... Um, the disadvantage I'm going to give you... Ah... No, fuck it. Here's one more blue because he activated you. He actually gave you this turn. All right. I was going to give right. you help from your friends, but they're unconscious, so... Jesus Christ. No! I should have put, put that all together. Okay, here it goes. So while all this is preparing, and I'm wiggling the little, the little arm while I'm hacking, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I turn up my rocket punch... Up to eleven, baby, and using using that uh, uh, the uh, elasticity, the tautness of the boa <laughs> that burned I, up an orbit that you managed to re sew as you fell. I managed to, Earth. yeah. This is yeah, this is leftover boa. I shoot myself like a dart with the rocket punch. <laughs> what do you say as you do it? I say, uh, 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 what's a f renegade? There we go. <laughs> No! <laughs> Why but did you hack the gun? <laughs> to get the bullet. Roll them, roll them, roll them bones. It's too late. Your five, bullet bill. Five successes, one threat. Holy shit! <laughs> okay, <laughs> we see it. We see it. Yeah, right. Um, so. Serpentos, um, <laughs> you're in the gunnery turret, um, and you you're clearing a path for Engage because you see him just like terminating his way out of out of the woods, but you also know he's your enemy. But admittedly, for both of you, Serpentos didn't blow you up. <laughs> William did. So he might not actually be against you yet. So Adam, my question to you is not really knowing whether or not he's your enemy. Now you've, you've hung some shit on him. So do you, you just need to kill him so that no one can find out the truth. Right. Right. So, cause my life, like this is a full on a few good men thing where like he code redded someone. You just got to get him out of there. Right. They can't handle the truth. Cause if, All right. they, if they knew, then like my, my elaborate lie that, that I sold them on would, would just you know, be worth nothing. <laughs> Okay. All the sleeping people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Serpentos, you see this fucking fireball start to erupt from uh, from out of the woods. There's a bunch of other uh, villainous characters who are shooting at you that no one seems to care about, but that's fine. They're just around, I guess. Um, but then the arm cannon starts to move, and that's concerning because that is the best gun. And I think as as a as a man who applied to a help wanted ad to gain more power a bigger gun it's like the donald trump syndrome a bigger gun somewhere is scary in his case you know like <laughs> a brain or some such uh so a big scary thing is is happening and you kind of look to it and then suddenly you think of what you would do which is exactly what he's doing and it's a classic like villain meets hero like moriarty holmes moment except if you're both just weird sociopaths <laughs> where you see the gun moving and then you look to the boas and then you look to him and you realize this is a trick um he's tricking me he's oh he's like he, like he's like it's like a it, it's it's a it's a sudden like wait a minute no one needs a boa if they're <gasps> um yeah. I remember my training from General Brace. He'd be like, if you find yourself with a costume tickle truck, you shall find all the boas that you need in order to distract the enemy. Lieutenant Boa, get in here and tell them about how to make a boa snap. The enemy will assume the gun is a weapon, but what we know is the boa is a weapon. Private, put your hand on the wall. I have now bowled your hand 
to the wall. You cannot push the button if your hand is bowed to the wall. People say fear the force. Fear the feathers. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Um, fear the feathers, yeah. So that so but it, no it, so so you're 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 suddenly realizing it, uh, everything is 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 falling together, and that is when a tremor runs through the force, and in the cockpit, with your force sensitivity at maximum, Vic Denbar, your eyes shoot open. What? <laughs> And you realize you have but a moment to save the Vic Dunbar or Denbar legacy. What do you do? You see Brash uh, unconscious. You see Nick's unconscious. You're at the co-pilot panel. What do you do? I <laughs> sorry, I was not ready for this. I don't understand <laughs> the context of me waking up and being like, "You have one second." Uh, I, I I drag uh, Brash and Nix out of the cockpit uh, to leave. Right, we're going. Yep. To, yeah. You grab them both, and uh, with strength that comes as no surprise to you, but possibly to listeners, uh, you're able to get them back. Uh, a helpful Gronk droid says, "Gronk," and then grabs both of them, throws them over his Gronk body, um, and Gungnir Ramsey goes. Oh, tits, it's going down, isn't it? Misa think we gotta get out of here! Um, and all of you rush uh, quickly as two long-time nemeses open fire on each other. And as the, the flaming ball of revengeance crashes into the fully weaponized robo-copman... Um, Vic, you grab your friends and leap out of the wee baby Seamus as it explodes. No. And it's only when you hit the ground that you realize two things. One, you didn't bring dibs. Two, you look down at your hands and realize you didn't bring your friends but when you look around, they're on the ground around you. Somehow, you brought them with you. And then the wee baby Seamus explodes. And in the distance, you hear the roar of fire as Tutu Cups and the Death Squads continue their exchange. This episode of Dumb Scum and Villainy features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Adam McNamara at Adam McNamara 13 on Twitter, Guy Bradford at Guy Bradford on Twitter, and our fantastic game master Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode was edited by Ryan LaPlante, and all of Dum Dums and Dice's art is by Decapitated Markers at Decapitated Marker on Twitter. That's M R K R. Our theme song is In Orbit by Chronox, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Dice. That's D U M B D U M B D I C E. Now get out of my shop. I'm a toy dairy. Your Jedi mind tricks do not work on me. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time Christian Manicola, Long Long, The Half Blind Prophet, James Quayar, DM Rob, Christopher Little, Joshua White, Olin Anderson, Sue One, Devin Boyce, George Dolby, One True Artistry, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them and a little bit of thanks to you. <laughs>